just for fun. Everybody. Some people call me Pringles Dick, but I never really found out why. I don't really have a Pringles Dick, I just keep my dick inside. I keep my dick inside a Pringles can because it keeps my penis safe and dry. Some people call me Pringles Dick, but I never really found out. I never really found out why. Hermantown is now in session. Brandon Johnson. Rob Schraub. <laughs> Spencer Crittenden. And just for good fun, open, open Mike Eagle. Oh, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. What? What? Also, that other guy, the mayor of Harmon Town, Mr. Dan Harmon. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Oh, no. Yeah. We did it. Damn it. Yeah! Oh, my sweet serenity. Yeah! This is it. The last fucking Hermantown. Oh, we Lord. did it. Se seven years of sadness. Whoa. Uh, wh wh where's the music? There was no music. I, I sang a song. Oh, uh, yeah, you did a cappella. So you, okay, all right. He wants to do his mama rap. No, no, no. I don't Zach, you want, you, Zach, put a beat on so Dan can have some music. I, have, I haven't done mama raps in, ever since Mike taught me to stay off of that crutch. That's right. <laughs> is that true? I think, I think you did. That is it's not true. true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> that is not true. It's purified true. my flow. There's 80 mamas out there right now picketing. Waiting to be <laughs> fucked. Zach, you got, you, you got some music, Zach? I got a beat right there. All right. Okay. Just Let's give it up. Also, uh, the dude that's been uh, laying down beats for us for a thousand years, give it up for Zach McKeever, everybody. Oh, Lord. Oh, shit. I, I didn't really... I, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're applauding. Now the pants. The coming off. Now the pants. Now the pants. Now the pants. Hear the beat. Yeah, turn it up. Some people fuck mamas, not me. That's not what I do. My flow is clean as Elmer's blue. It's white and tidy. Your mama's nighty. It has blue on it too. Talking about my cum. Cause when I'm done, fucking her. Jackie Lou Lake. Jackie Lou Yo, I'm here to demonstrate. When I nocturnally ejaculate. Yo, I'm gonna put it on her plate. Okay, gross. Oh, no. That's what I got gross. Plate. I don't want to picture cum on plates. You ever uh, see a, uh, uh, one of those pornos, That's like those gonzo food. pornos, where it's like, let's all come in a funnel or a cup or something, and it's like, or a cracker. I don't like ex exposed cum. Like I, on flesh. Come on flesh. Terrific. 
come, as soon as cum hits a floor or a couch or a plate or a c- c- saucer. It seems a, like a part two is coming once they start adding props to hit it. That yeah, yeah. Hit that beat! Hit that beat! It no, didn't on, happen. Man, don't. Uh, oh, no. Good instinct. You think Thank after you. seven years we'd be able good. to drop a beat no, and you could smart. talk about coming on plates? Yeah, but it doesn't, I mean, look, that we wouldn't be rewarded for that. That's, I'm, it's the good, after seven years, it took him to recognize when to not indulge you. Uh, we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't want any more of that right now. Um, uh, so it's the 360th episode of Harmontown. Uh, full circle. We've got a... Full circle. Full yeah. circle. I mean, th- think about the the unintentional odds that we would end on a 360, a full, yeah. like, a, a full circle. Full circle. Full circle. <laughs> what are the odds, Rob? What are the odds? 360 odds. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, we, got, we got overflow with, like, luminaries up here on, on stage, uh, friends of the show and things. Uh, this is our jury. And... <laughs> That still wasn't enough, Jeff. We still oversold, or I don't know. Well, hopefully there are. Anyways, we still had more people coming than we could ever yeah. see. So uh, apparently they're simulcasting to the uh, Mexican place next door. La Shout Fonda. out La to Fonda. the Mexican place. La Fonda, I yeah. guess, if you... Well, they're they're eating nuts. the delicious tacos that is a, uh, a dying podcast. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so hello to the people over there. Also, Dave Klein over here. Give me, can I get a youp? Get a youp. <laughs> <laughs> One youp. Really committing to the Chewbacca thing here with the. <laughs> totally. Dan, I, I, be honest. Be 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 brutally honest. Happy, sad. How do you feel right now? Well, I don't know. I, I first of all, I'm exhausted coming back from a, a family trip to the desert. I still got sand in 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 every crevice and. Uh, I, uh, but, and I, I, but I don't know. I mean, I think it's a very, I'm a very, uh, I think before I would be able to feel anything, there would be defense mechanisms that would go up that would right. keep me from feeling, which is something I can't really control. I'm a very uh, a broken person. Um, but but you, you, you were the one that decided to kill this. And, and also, I, I can't believe this lasted more than seven weeks, let alone seven years. But, uh, you 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 pulled the trigger on this. Uh, yeah, it, is it to quote to quote Mike Mike Eagle? I thought had a great way of describing it in the green room. He just said it's a very it's an emotionally pregnant night. I, I like that because it's not it's like what happy sad I don't know it's and, like and, a pregnancy. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> You're like uh, game changer. Uh, and then and Emily, uh, who started this thing, Emily Gordon, uh, she was, is sad that she couldn't be here tonight, but she, she, she told everybody she wished she were here because she gave birth to this. Uh, she was the reason why we started this. And she said she wanted to be here when it died, yeah. <laughs> which you can take in two different ways. But, but she's, uh, she's at Stonehenge right now, so she's like in a place of sacrifice. <laughs> But for real, like th- there was no reason the show should have lasted more than a year. Like it was yeah. crazy, and we, used to, we we started monthly, right? And, yeah. And then it became weekly, and then for some stupid reason, it was two hours every fucking time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I I'm only happy that it won't be two hours of my life every week. But but I, I've met a bunch of people that traveled from all over the planet. There's people from Spain here. There's people from Italy. There's people from. Uh, Sherman Oaks, yeah. <laughs> I, I wish I didn't hear that. There's but, no but, guests, so I'm just going to come back. You know, it's, it, it, we have all these format rules, and one of them is that I yeah. stand out there and talk, but then, then so, the guest comes out, and then I take my seat, so I'm just going to sit down now. It's a central pillar to the show. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's structure. Yeah. But think yeah. about the time that we met Spencer for the first time. How, how many episodes in were we in when Spencer that was you, like that you emerged? Five or something. Five? Something. So that was before it was uh, a, vi- a video. That was back when it was just audio. Oh, yeah. No video back then. You know, the cops can, you know, that the Ameri- in America. They can shoot you. They can shoot you. <laughs> With it's guns. True. It's uh, true. The co- but the, you, you know, the, the cops can, in America, and this is different from European countries, I think, in, they uh, can in shoot Canada. You. But uh, 
they can they can lie to you about what what they have on you. Like right. they can tell you we found a bloody fingerprint and it's your fingerprint, and they don't have to be telling the truth about that. I don't know, I don't know, good or bad. But here's the thing: I, I I just heard I just heard this thing on this true crime podcast. I thought this was amazing. The cop there, there so there's this this girl goes to a party. She she disappears. They find her body later. She's been horribly. It's a you know I don't want to dwell on the details of the of the crime because I want to skip to the funny part. But uh, the <laughs> A life was lost, and you know uh, uh, that's why we listen to true crime because it's for the victims. Uh, but uh, I, the, 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 the 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 cops in trying to like get the guy that they knew did it, but it's, it's like, oh, your DNA's on her, uh, on the places of her her costume that are ripped and all this stuff. Like, like the guy is like. He's he's dead to rights, but he's just you know doing that thing where he just he's just he's he he tells one lie and then he gets caught in that lie and he's like, well, I did have sex at that party. It might have been her. It's like consensual sex, all this stuff. And the cop cop goes like, but listen, man, look, we know you did it, but it's a, look, I don't I don't think you're a killer. I think you did it on accident, which is something that cops always do. And then the guy's like, dude, I never even I, didn't, I don't even know what you're talking about. And then the cop kind of blurts out. He goes like. You know something you don't know about this girl? I'm gonna tell you something you don't know. Dude, I don't know anything about her. Dude, she had brittle bone disease. Fuck. The cop just like busts out this amazing technique because then the guy the guy's like going, oh. Yeah. He's like, yeah, you could, I mean, if something happened, it's not your fault. That was wait, his wait, lie? Wait. Her bone, yeah. Her bones are like made of glass. I just think that's amazing, so that's right. like a weird form he, of victim he was trying, blaming. He was like, trying to give this guy an out, like, like look, man. Yeah, it's you, like, I, I just think it's such you, a bro, weird... you didn't know you were fucking a Fabergé egg? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, like, and, then, and the guy totally fell for it. He's like, okay, look, man, you know, we, start, we were doing a little, like, choke play, and, like, she choked me, and there's no marks because my bones aren't brittle. And then I, 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 I have brittle bones. And they're like, thank you. She doesn't have brittle bones. Go to prison. What? Damn. Oh, so they made it up? They of made, course they made it up. Yeah, I thought I, was, I thought I had made that clear to yeah. the guy. I, 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 that, they, that, can, they can make stuff up, that, but I never, that, I never that, heard that, that kind of thing. That knowledge makes me not want to murder people. <sighs> I feel like if they can lie, they should catch way more people than they do. Yeah. <laughs> They yeah, could just you know, say fucking anything. You know, sixty percent of uh, of homicide goes un unsolved. They're not telling the right lies, <laughs> or is it? Or is it forty percent? Maybe I just told one of, <laughs> an important uh, lie. I I did, well, it's one or the other, but it's almost half of if you, you if you if so you want to kill they, somebody, they, they you, you, say, you hey, flip hey, a coin, you might get away with it. They could say, "Hey, we f we fingerprinted you. Um, it doesn't look like you were at the crime scene, but we know that you have AIDS now, because the the person that you anything you want to get off your AIDS. chest." <laughs> Right, right, Jeez, right. Right. Yeah. And also it's 1981 and there's no it's like it's it, there's still a lot of misunderstandings about the illness and <laughs> technology. What? It's not 1981. Dude, look, I, I, look, look look at my partner and he's got a little alligator that he <laughs> made out of fabric really fast. Yeah. It's like that's not a real Izod shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah it he, is. They got a fake he's, Rubik's he's cube. He's got Debbie Gibson's hat on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so co cops can just lie. Here's my fault, but nice there try. It is. So my house has been spider gassed while I was uh, out. I, I bought this house, and uh, it's filled with spiders. Spider gas sounds terrifying. Apparently, uh, there's different gas, because it was like, if, if I have cockroaches and spiders, and I call the spider gas guy, do the cockroaches like just smell this gas and go like, yeah, fuck those guys. Like... <laughs> Good, more more dried milk puddles for us. Yeah. Um, the, what what but, kind of spiders? You, you you were looking around and there were spiders hanging about. I don't know, the house was just the house is just filled with spiders. I I, I yeah. all kinds. I, I I so I don't think it was a real actual infestation, but I must have. I have a really good assistant, and uh, like I think I just I, I I just I was like this place is filled with spiders, and then it got, it got spider gassed. <laughs> Uh, while, I, while I was in the desert for Thanksgiving, but then the guy said something after he tell, 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 correct me if I'm wrong. You would not spider gas your place if 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 they were upfront about this part. Um, the guy said, "By the way, it doesn't just magically make the spiders all instantly die. Like you will see a few spiders over the next couple of days, maybe even more than usual, because they'll be fleeing for their lives." <laughs> I don't, I'm not. 
That's the only thing worse than a house full of spiders is a house full of <laughs> spiders you tried and failed to kill. Yeah. Yeah. Sp- the J- Josie Wales spiders? Fucking They're all pale desperate. rider spiders? Yeah. They're like pulling at your leg desperately, pleading for help. <laughs> Oh, well, you're, that's very em- empathic of you. I, I'm, I'm imagining I'm like fucking Brandon Lee and the Crow. Like a pit, the lightning flashes in their silhouette and they're like, nice try. Uh, like, 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 you want to you try that again? Like, uh, you just wake up covered in webs and they're, and they're, and they're like, they're, they're, they're like coughing up blood into their little spider hankies, but it's like they still got enough fight in them to do shit that spiders normally don't do because they fear repercussion. <laughs> They're long-term thinkers, spiders. The inventors of the web. <laughs> Owls are wise. Elephants never forget. Spiders, incredibly patient. <laughs> long-term thinkers. You don't want to piss them off. That's kind of cool. That's like if, as a human, if you were hungry, you could just make a plate and wait. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they do. But then they also, you know, every spider web you walk through, that's like 10, uh, like there's a, only a one in 10 chance that you're actually walking through a, a, an inhabited spider web because they, they spin one and they wait and then they have to decide when it's like when to blame the web, when to blame the location. They just, they just go and do another one. And so that's why, you know, cobwebs and stuff because the spiders are always working. Uh, they're like, they're like little prospectors, those guys. Good for them. All right. Well, look, hey, hey. yeah, I decided to end the show. Now do you understand why? Yes. We are only on episode 360. We're down to talking about the patience of spiders. <laughs> and the leverage cops can wield by lying about a brittle bone disease, which I think is a 30 Rock bit, Cody said. She's like, you know, I think that cop heard that on 30 Rock, brittle bone disease. That's, is that even... Is that even real? And if it is and you're offended, don't jump up and storm the stage and blame us. Because you'll break your motherfucking neck. (laughs) Yeah. Your put down just became a PSA. (laughs) We were... uh... So high right now. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. We should name a strain after the end of this show. Yeah. Oh my God, look at my suit. It's a damn good suit. It's a Wait, good I, suit. I, 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 you, you really I are thought that it high. Was, I, I thought I, it was I thought white. Joking, but you're fucking, you, you really are that high. It feels like a Dean Martin roast. <laughs> <laughs> we are talking to a Brandon Johnson. He's the only man that's so high. He's the only man I've ever seen walking around with a snake in his hand trying to beat up a stick. Mm. What? <laughs> the stick had it coming. <laughs> uh, so, uh, it, 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 I, 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 I'll give you two choices. We can start to go. We can start to share some uh, favorite uh, favorite memories of, of of the show, or I can get your advice on whether I should get an 8K TV. <laughs> Because I feel like four, I feel like 4K is enough. Isn't the human that, what, eye just 1080p? I, I, like, 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 I, I feel like the, the higher the definition, the, the, the more... The tighter the sweater. The, 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 yeah. Woo. <laughs> A non-high five is happening. <laughs> Jerking off a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> You want to help out? No. Wait, uh, d- uh, I, I would say number one, but let's go number two. Let's go 8K. Okay, so do you think I should get an 8K TV? <laughs> <laughs> because I, I feel like this guy's I, giving I really a thumbs don't up know what back that means. here. I don't know what you're, you're talking about. You're the man about. who stood on stage and proudly proclaimed you wanted the most expensive peanut butter. <laughs> yeah, but not, not, uh, not phony peanut butter that's like 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 uh this peanut butter makes you fly and I've, then and i because i think when you get up to 8k resolution you're kind of buying a lie at a certain point doesn't the human eye incapable of seeing beyond a certain resolution I not at our age 
I feel like watching watching old movies on really high resolution makes it look like a uh, like a reality show. You don't do that. No, don't do don't, that. Don't I, do not, that. Jeff. I'm not gonna do that. Stop it. I, Stop. I want Dan to go to the second question. Well, I, I, I told question. the guy let's stick with 4K, just okay. so you know. So I, I asked you for your advice for nothing, but I just wanted to. Yeah, thank you, sir. Dan, uh, Dan, emotionally, emotionally. Yes. Because you've used Harmontown as your vehicle to kind of go through catharsis and through therapy. When this stops, are, are you going to miss what you get out of this? Or are you going to be happy to th- throw this in the garbage? Yeah, but I'll miss it. But, but you know, you, you, uh, there's a difference between missing something and regretting. You know, I, I think you, you got to... I don't know, I, you know, I, I, don't you think Garrison Keillor wishes maybe he'd, you know, a little... What? <laughs> he just took a shit on I, I think he did. I just think, you know, you, do, you can't do a show no, for... No, I get it. I, I'm not one of those guys, I'm not like Robert Altman, like I don't want to die doing what was stuff. The, what was the reason that you said, okay, let's, let's stop? Uh... I think I think it was you, you. You brought that country western singer up here, and <laughs> that really, okay, that happened. I had Mitch Hurwitz as a guest, and and then you guys Wait, w- you, you're went gonna, off you, stage you, and sang a song in the green room. Steve Leedy, ladies and gentlemen. Yay! Steve Leedy. Hey, wait, you, you're, you're going to blame the end of Armantown on me bringing Robbie Falks on stage? Yeah, we were going to keep doing the show until that night. Yep. I think you announced it before that. Wait, wait, what do you mean, Dan? What are you talking about? This sounds like it went really bad. I want to hear all it about it. It went bad, <laughs> yeah. No, d- yeah. Dan, t- we stopped doing the show. Why, why, why do you bring up the Robbie folks coming on stage? I, don't, I, I, what, to be, I just answered your question. That was, that was the night. That, you killed the show. He said it's your fault, Jeff. Shit. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. 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 He says it's your fault. It's your fault. Fuck. Why? Why is that? Why is that? Why do you? Why do you need to know that? Why was it Robbie Fox's fault? Why do you? Why? Why? Why can't it be? <laughs> answer. The, answer the question. Wait, answer mine. Answer the question. Answer my question. What, what? What's your question? Why can't it be his fault? <laughs> because he was just a guest. Right. <laughs> well, I didn't book him. Oh shit! You, you you didn't book Open Mike Eagle. He's here tonight. You didn't book him. I, I we ran into each other and he came out. And right. the I, told, I, told, I, I, I told you there is an Open Mike Eagle ban in effect on the show. You defied it. Oh shit! Yeah, this is how I find out. It's, <laughs> we have a closed Open Mike Eagle policy. <laughs> yeah, it's a closed Mike Eagle. The the Robbie Folks episode was. Long after the decision was made to oh, stop yeah. the show, but, but, but why do you bring that up? Because uh, that was the I, reason. I just, I, I just wanted to keep having the show be fun and not have to do it like a deposition about why I chose to kill it. I mean, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of answers to that question. I don't, but I don't think. I mean, it's like uh, answer number one coming up. I think that right after the top five, answers. this song. I think I, th- guess I think, singer I th- I think one out. answer to the question is uh, from a, a what would you call it a, a stylistic uh, perspective or I don't think that's quite the word either but uh, there's I know that one answer but it's probably maybe like ten percent of the of, of of all the reasons is just the whole kind of like moving from a world as we have during the eight year run of the show from where the internet was a place you hid from the real world to the internet for better or for worse now the real world and um and and a whole generation went from being 12 years old to uh whatever 12 plus 8 is um (laughs) i didn't come to la to do math um but uh 20 (laughs) thank you uh But the whole, I mean, they, they were born Did online, you guess? and the world is online, and as, and, and, and as such, because of all of the social changes and things, like, it's sort of like, it's this idea of me playing myself as a character, like, like, I think I'm at a crossroads at 46, having done this for almost a decade, and really, I've been doing that for 
25 years going like, hey, look at me, I'm Dan Harmon. You know what happened to me today? I'm going to tell you the whole thing. And like, I'm the fucking, (laughs) it's me. The name on my birth certificate is the name of this clown. Um, So if you have a complaint, just type my name into the internet and tweet me. And and if if I do something wrong, get me fucking destroyed. Like, destroy my life. Because my life is, you know, that whole thing was like, for 20 years, it was like, yeah, that's cool and easy, too, because I'm lazy. Um, and now, and I think we've hit a crossroads here where doing that is a really specific choice to make now. Like, like moving forward from this, I, if, I, if I kept g- 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 advertising myself w- as like, hey, this is my show, this is my name, this is the name of the person I was born, here's all of the things about me and all these things, it's like I become a brand. Like, like moving forward from here, now that we've hit this tipping point of like everyone's online and everything that is online is part of a constant conversation about where everyone stands and what you're going to do about it. And it's almost like I don't, I, I like being who I am, but at the same time, I, I, I personally wouldn't, continue to listen to a guy in a podcast go like yeah but what about me <laughs> like like I, I because it's just not that I, I don't I would it wouldn't be my choice anymore I wouldn't I wouldn't continue to find it therapeutic because like I, I and so and then you start it's just like I would have to like either like willfully compartmentalize my pride from the, the my narcissism and all this stuff like put all these parts about me against themselves only for the end goal of having a podcast, um, or I can like let the podcast kind of drift away while I continue this process of letting like who I am kind of like disentangle and like sort itself out. Because I don't, I, and I mean this with the utmost respect. Like I don't want to. The best case scenario is 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 is. Joe Rogan, right? Like you, you're you've got a billion people listening to you. You're everything that you say is like a. It's like I don't I don't want to be a brand. I don't want to stand for things by being having been born. I don't I don't want I don't want to be like I just like oh you're a that's the that's that Dan Harmon thing that principle like I I want to like I want to like own a gun and be liberal and you can't like I I want to I want to like do all kinds of like paradoxical things and it's like and I don't want to have to think about when I'm doing them like how I'm going to f- like figure out how to sell them uh, uh, that, and that's again that is a one big bucket that's like 10% of the reason there's a bunch of uh, I just I don't I don't I just think who wants to who wants to start sucking like like not that the show's ever been good I just but 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 <laughs> but who 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 wants to just keep you know I don't know. Who wants to, I, 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 I can't believe this show ever lasted more than seven weeks. I, I, like the, the fact that it went for more than seven years is crazy. Like, it, but but I've met so many people that have flown from like like there's people here tonight that came from all over like the planet, and uh, th- there's a weird um, relationship that people have that there's people that have gone through depression or illness or injury, and th- they have a connection to this show that that it, like I, I don't understand because we just get up here and just kind of fuck about like it, it, like for us it's just silly and it, and or maybe for you or for me or like for Spencer or you know for, for the for the you know the Dave Kleins the people that we've brought up on stage uh, Shrimp Brandon <laughs> Uh, we fuck about too. Yeah, but like, but like it, 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 it's it, it's always been a weird way to be kind of cathartic and kind of like let out whatever's going on in our mind. But like, uh, there's people that have a. For me, like I, I don't really understand the connection that people have. That people are really sad that it's ending, because they went through like psychological stuff, and this show had a an impact on it. I don't it, get it. Yeah, I, I don't know. get it. I was listening to the show, the podcast, last week, and I don't know if you listened to the show last week, Jeff, but the end of the show last week just devolved into all of us screaming over each other. Right. No, you did this. And, and, and I'm like, who, who doesn't know us would ever want to listen to this? 
I want to turn it off. But we found out over over, over the years. Kate was like, "What that, is that?" That, that, that str- stranger. That's my voice. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! A giant man is oh walked on stage and is texting on his phone in the background <laughs> of the stage. Y'all gotta warn me about shit like this. What, do you His see something? His shoes are giant to uh, uh, Yeah, no, yes, there, I do. Where, where? There's, there's nothing back there. <laughs> <laughs> Nick is on stilts back here. That is really terrifying. You I really think need he's to just come a out giant front man. For everybody to really check what out. What the fuck is happening? Yeah, see? Don't trip on the cable. <laughs> I, 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 I have to be honest. I don't like it. I do not like it. Yo, it's a great talent, we but I don't want to be by it, really. No. I don't really want to be, like, by it. No, no, no. Hi. What big fan. Big fan. I mean, it, yeah, big, sh- literally. <laughs> He's a big fan. To all, to all the people that travel far and wide, this is what you get. Yeah. <laughs> so this is... What the fuck? What, this we is got a nine-foot dude on stage. What is going on, Nick? What's happening? Get a can mic. We get a, can we get a, get a spot on your face? He's too yeah, tall for the light. There you go. The there you go. I think you should stage dive. <laughs> See how far we can get. Hey, hey, guys. Sorry, I was trying to get uh, to, uh, to the the popcorn. It's still up in the front. Is that over there? I don't do well with stairs, so that's gonna. Hey, could you two do like kind of like a a hundred year old man, thousand year old man kind of like? <laughs> A team like a classic comedy, like a classic sketch. comedy team. Like I'm here with the tallest man in the world. Okay, okay, yeah. right, go for it. Yeah, of course you can do. Yeah, that. whatever you Ladies want. Ladies and gentlemen, the tallest man in the world. Yay. Oh, yeah. For those of you at home, we are He's looking so at a tall man next to Dan, who is of normal size, normal size, an extremely tall man. He's well, giving the tallest, fiercest look of all. Yes, he's tall, Daddy. White shoes and khaki pants that say, I'll stand over you. I. Uh. He's working realness with a vision. It, Standing it, it. at over 9 1, he's a genius. <clears throat> hey, if you can twerk in stilts, I'll definitely throw money at you. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, okay. Look at him shake that ass. Get your dollars out, and I'm talking about hard gold coins. Can I get more Brandon in the monitors, please? I <laughs> do. <laughs> Can we raise the monitors up four feet, please? <laughs> Can't hear anything. Well, I'm, he- I'm here with the world's uh, tallest man, which is a, a, a one-for-one analog for, for world's oldest man. So, whereas... Whereas the world's oldest man, I would we would talk about the things you've seen throughout history and do like historically co- contextual like kind of one-liners. Uh, I guess we're just gonna stick to just like height. I hate, I hate trees. <laughs> you must have gotten quite a few arguments with uh, with with specific species of tree. Yeah, everyone with uh, uh, bran- branches. <laughs> I love light poles. Ooh. Is it, I say, is it hard for a fella like you to, uh, oh. Using his elbows in ways no one's seen. He's the tall daddy, a killing machine. This is good for an audio podcast, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> for five dollars, you can watch the last episode of Harmon Town. I say, is it hard for a fellow like you to uh, uh, enjoy the company of women? I am way into the crowns of heads. <laughs> Ladies, don't hesitate. Masturbate. He's your tall daddy. This is the worst episode of laughing I've ever seen. <laughs> there must be quite a few places you're not allowed being that tall. Yeah, let's say them together. (laughs) 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 
Uh, What's it like down there? <laughs> Look who's back. He's at least six inches of butt crack. That's pretty average, I feel. Definitely more than six. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I don't, I, I'm normally a bad interviewer, and also it's bad improv to ask questions, so I don't know. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, shit! Tall man on trial, there's no denial! I, oh, shit. All right, all right. I'm, I'm very happy to be here, Dan. Jeff, all the crew, thank you guys so much. Uh, Brand, yeah. Let's get it for Nick, the tallest man in town. Nick Rutherford, tallest man. I hate the shoes the most. <laughs> Do they freak you out a little bit? Yeah, they imply that his feet are that big. <laughs> he got regular sized hands and size 47 feet. Yeah. No thanks. No thanks. Yeah. He looks like like a like I'm looking at him with a fisheye lens. Yeah. My, yeah. M- Mike, what you been up to? What, what you been working on? Uh, music. Yeah. That's yeah. It's a stock answer, but it's always true. Yeah. But like, are, are you one of those ambitious, tenacious sorts that like works all the time? Are yeah, you, but you're, you're, only because I have to pay for things all the time, and that's the only way I make money. You Whoa. have to pay for things to get money. No, I have to make music to make money to pay for things. Okay. You know, uh, I, learned a, I learned a new saying today because we were talking about naked Martin. <laughs> and it's a, I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't sound the way I think you think it sounds. Like, it doesn't, because it's like the middle of a song. So it's not like every time it's like a, you know, like the song starting. I, get, I, I will never do it again. All right. Oh, that's you? You're doing that? Uh, yeah, for 300 I'm episodes. blaming somebody in the back with my eyes the whole time. Uh, These people are professionals. It's uh, this motherfucker. <laughs> did, you, did you ever talk about Naked Martin on this show? No, no, I never I have. Think... But we were talking about it today, and Cody said, you know, if you do what you love, you never have to work a day in your life. <laughs> <laughs> for, for instance, Naked Martin, right. who came into our lives courtesy of... Uh, Cody's old roommate, Nicole, who was on this, this trip with us, Nicole was doing comedy somewhere, and some British couple at, were at the bar getting shit-faced, and they were like looking at some video on their phone, and they're like, do you want to see the funniest video ever? And it was like, this is, it's this British guy, and he's like looking at the camera, and he, uh, he says, uh, uh, hello, uh, 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 Alex and Peggy. Um, it gives them like she gives up this like this personalized message and goes like, uh, uh, "Congratulations on your, on your recent engagement. Have fun in Hamburg and stay away from those oranges." And he gives a little naughty tisk tisk finger. By the way, he's stark naked and and has a well, what I hope is a super long dick. Um, uncircumcised. But, uh, yeah, and it's kind of uncircumcised, and he's very old, so it's kind of like the. I don't think this is an important detail, but it is a distracting one that his foreskin has. Why, a sort why, of why like, do you hope it's super long? Was it was it long? Or well, you, because I want. I, I you want us to think. You I want, want to the think average, average dick size to yeah. be smaller than. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the smaller, the better. <laughs> I mean, what it, what it, what do you want uh, mortgage rates to be? Lower. <laughs> I assume. I'm totally following it. <laughs> okay. So keep going, keep going. You're, you're not even at the, so at he, the he halfway gives, part. He, he gives a little cautious f- finger wave about the oranges in Hamburg and, and flaps his, his flaccid but long penis against his naked thighs with a quick twitch of his waist. And then he reaches down between his legs to underneath his balls somewhere while looking at the camera. It gets a curious contemplative look on his face. <laughs> And and he's kind of like moving his fingers around a bit back there. And we, you know, it's, it's a very very strange long pause. You don't know what's what's really going on. And then he withdraws a, uh, a human a, turd a, a bowel movement. No. Wait, yeah. What? I know, he, I know. he withdraws a poop. Yeah. With his hands. And then he and he kind of presents it pridefully, and then he smears it all no! over his face. And he gives no! a thumbs up. Is it, is it Gigi Allen? What the fuck are you watching? It's Naked Martin. This is somebody you're still friends with? I, I will only say one thing about this. The, the, this is the weird thing when you, if you ever see the video. 
The, his, There's a his, video. His, his poop is. It's a video. Yeah. What? what he, he, pulls, he pulls a poop out of his butt. Yeah. And puts it on his face. And, and After he congratulated somebody on their engagement. I want. I. It, it's. I think it's important to note that his his poop in the in that particular video, and and He's I know I know I'll describe this. Perfect. Like, that's not possible. But it's like it's so healthy looking. Yeah. That the it's right almost sh- it's basically not gross to yeah. watch him smear it across his face. It's like it looks like just uh your how you would imagine a perfectly healthy bowel movement. Like it's just perfectly textured. It's like know, a you're clip like, art it of make. a turd. But it, it, and it just it almost looks comfortable because like, he clearly enjoys doing Why, it. Or, wait, tell, tell me again how you came about this video clip. This was a this was a, a friend of Cody's old roommate. Ran into some strangers, so she got the video from them. Right. They were affiliated with this wedding engagement that someone, one of the guests or something, had, oh, so, had so tapped you, this you're, fella. You're three steps away from an actual human being. It, right. This is not just random internet stuff. So we tracked him down in the Rick and Morty writer's room. Like, we were looking around for this guy, and somebody found him. And his name is Naked Martin. And his, what I kept trying to figure out, and he's a very, very sweet seeming fella who, no. um, his. <laughs> No, I'm telling. I mean, don't do it. No, he's what? No, oh. Don't try to sell us this dude, please. No, it's, I mean, I, no, please. he's let's he's, not go out like this, Dan. He's a super pleasant not guy. Not like his, this. His bio is like, I'm Naked Martin. I'm a nudist that loves oh. to have fun. Right, poop and like, on his face for your. But it's so healthy, this poop. <laughs> you gotta understand how much his website. You how healthy buy, does a poop right. have to look? To so you can buy coffee mugs. So on his, yeah, and, and and you can also get like a video if you want. Me you can, undies like, is gonna it. be like, so mad about this promotion. <laughs> oh no! So then Cody, like she eventually, unbeknownst to me, she she orders a video from from Naked Martin, and it was gonna be for the can anniversary. Can you play the audio? You can't play the video, but you can play the audio. Why right? can't you play the? Video? I can, but like, yeah, I mean it's. it's oh okay, it's, sorry. It's, it's the last show. I just show. don't know. If, I just don't know if like, playing yeah. the audio is really right. that. Important no. versus the amount of time it's going to spend. I agree. Hey, well, then don't. Okay. It's your show. Thank you. Thank Stop you. doing things. Well, I try to yes and people. Are, are, are all of his clips uh, him pooping on things? Uh, no. So, so like, we were trying to figure that out. It was like, does this guy like, because it's, it's all about naked Martin and nudity, but his, his logo... It it looks like the logo <laughs> is written in shit. in shit. Yes, it is kind of. Well, it, but it also could be hot dogs. No, no. He didn't smear no. hot dogs on his face. Hot dogs are no, no, no. Turds, turds. They're turds. Why so, don't you know the difference between hot dogs and shit? Yeah. <laughs> I just How did that I, I think happen? it's possible for yeah. a graphic designer to not know the difference. I'd like to give a special shout out to people that traveled here for, uh, to see this final show. Okay, well, here's the thing. Keep so going talking, talking about, about that poops the video. On oh, Talk- well, so, I mean, I want I want so badly to just like hand it off to Jeff now and go like, "No, no, yeah, let's abort this immediately. Let's clear it." Like, no, but what what so go on. Oh, you have questions about this guy. I mean, I have a 100 Even though questions. we're doing a show? Yes. I mean, my, my, my first question is, what, what, what was the origin story of you finding this person, and how did this become a part of your life? Uh, so you're interested? Yes. Okay. Oh, I'm in. So uh, uh, the uh, Cody comes up to me a, uh, like a, mo- a month later, a couple weeks later, and she's kind of sadly, she goes, like, I, was gonna, I got something for our engagement, which is not until... Christmas time, our anniversary for our engagement, but it didn't go as well as I thought it would. And so I'm just gonna give it to you now. And it's and it's naked Martin uh, is sitting in kneeling in a kitchen. Oh. Everything about the video is like the first one. I gotta go back and describe the first one because it's like he's out in like a beautiful lush daylit garden like like all you can see behind him is just foliage like and, and, and he's just he's very chipper and crisp and the video and as i described like fr- from the texture of the shit to his deployment of it everything is just sort of like deployment. it looks as if he's done it a thousand times right. and Smiling. loves it um he's glowing and uh it, 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 and it's his own poop. He poops and then he does his own. Like he's he's well, we his don't know. Okay. No, he no. He's he re, he reaches between his naked legs where he's cleverly hid someone releasing else's poop. a bag of someone else's shit because because he wants to save himself a gross and yeah. tedious task. Okay. 
of withdrawing his own. Yes, I think it's his own shit. Okay. But, um, <laughs> I, I'm trying to think what's worse, his so, own poop or somebody else's poop. Some, some curated... But it is notable that it's all so cleanly done in that first video that it, it that is a question that comes to your mind. Right. Is like, is he is that really? Can you just do that? Can you just reach back there and like a rabbit from a hat? Like it's just in one piece. Like there's nothing gross about it. It's because I think and, Why and there's so, nothing gross about it's, it. It's it's shocking, but it's not the. That's it, the I, I think I think you'll find like the stuff with like with 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 shit is like the, it's the detail. Details. It's right. the sloppy organic details. That's why we don't. That's what we don't like about shit. It's like chaos, and it's like everything that's d- life is done with, and and as such, it behaves in no predictable way and things. And then when you draw like a cartoon turd, you can you don't like most people don't like react to a drawing of a turd that looks like a little Hershey's Kiss with stink lines coming off of it. It, 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 Like, we don't gag because it makes us think of real shit. Like, but anyway, so, like, I'm telling you, the guy's turd was a cartoon. So then Cody's video. So it's it's like, he he says... uh, he go, he's kneeling in a kitchen, so it's already like, oh, I just feel, why is he kneeling? And, uh, and, and do, there's like, do, there's do like we, saucepans do, hanging do, do from we know a, if, Do we know it's his kitchen or is he in somebody I, I, else's I, kitchen? I hope that he gets so many of these videos ordered that at every weekend he rents a B&B <laughs> and knocks them all out and just leaves a $500 tip. <laughs> For the cleaning staff, and just walks away right. the happiest guy in the world. I really, I'm telling you, if you see this guy's bio, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna love this guy. He's like, he represents all that is like, like unassuming and pure. He's he's hurting nobody, um, and and there's not right. enough people like him in the world. There, I said it, but. <laughs> But what I could never figure out is like, what well, does he love? Does he love the is shit stuff, or is that what people are like requesting? Because he says like, I'll do anything, and then are people like, rub shit on your face? And he's like, well, I'll I'll do that too. Or is he like, I love shit? Like you can't see anything at his site about like shit play. But then so then Cody orders this video, and it says uh, he goes uh, he's kneeling in the kitchen and he says, Dan. It's been one year since you said yes to Cody proposing to you, and she just wants you to know that she thinks you're the shit. And what? And and Cody did not ask him to do this part, but he now turns around. Ah, oh, damn. And this uh, is definitely his shit. Oh, look, it's uh, it's Jesse. Jesse Camp. What's up, Jesse? Yeah. Wait, wait. So, so she commissioned the, this guy. Yeah. So he turns around. She commissioned around. the shit to be taken. He turns around on his knees and That's then and starts to do the same thing he did, but now it's a completely different view. It's, it's no longer a mystery, right? It's and it's and it, and and the rabbit does not just come out of the hat. Like there's a there's a piece of rabbit that falls on the oh. the hardwood oh, floor no. with an audible kind of sound, <laughs> and then he turns back around with the, his shit now in his hand, and he. Cody had asked him. She was really sad. That's why she just she just waved the white flag and gave it to me a month early, because it's like she she is like it's he's he's. I was like, what is he doing? It is like, he, he's it's supposed to be a heart. He's trying to. Oh, no, he's, no. He's like trying to draw a heart on with, his chest. With, with, with but his it own just poop? It looks like this circle, no. and it's just like there's so much texture nope. to the chest hair, and no. And, no. and so. No. The, and then and then and then and then and then and then he gives a thumbs up, and then he presses a button on uh, ne- on something next to him that is apparently supposed to stop the video. And then there's like a eight second pause, <laughs> and then he and then he kind of does a couple false starts, and then he starts and, and then and then the video ends. So the whole thing is just sort of like you're just like, man, I hope he's happy. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I, I want to think that he's living the best how, life. How, how much did Cody pay him for this? Is it, like, is this a commission? Eighty pounds, which is hundred and three American dollars. That's not enough money. No, no it's, it's not. not. It is That's not. the thing that makes me assume or, that he likes or it because I, th- I think it might be a little enough. bit too much money. I think I think he not should enough. be charging a thousand dollars minimum to. It costs a hundred dollars to clean that shit up, man. Like, like he it likes costs a hundred dollars. To clean that, that shit, shit up. up. 
I, I, that's, I, that, that's what gives me the, the hope that I think, I think it's, he, must, he must be enjoying yes. it because this is otherwise he'd charge $50,000 like we would, yeah. right? How much would we charge uh, to rub Mike, our own shit on Mike our Mike Eagle, how much would you charge for that, for that if how you much? had to do it? What, what's your base rate? Wait, I had to do it and I had to make a video of it? Yeah. Base rate. In a normal video format that can be fucking shown to anybody. Right. Yeah. yeah. You could be naked shit. Mike ba- Eagle base? from now on. <laughs> naked shit rubbing Mike Eagle. Seventy-four million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's a guy that's like, yeah, because you're you're like I said, when you do what you love, right. you don't you don't have to work a day in your life. And you're like, your your goal, as is mine, is like yeah, there's no there's no price you could put on your ability to be open mic and do what you want. It it you, it would need to be so much money so for much. you to shatter that all. It, it, uh, that that you'd have to be set up for life. Yeah, and if you did anything Shitter. for ten thousand hours, you become an expert at it. <laughs> yeah, and you should be said, paid for expertise. Yeah. He references a thing on his website about why seventy four million. That's a that's a weird specific. It's number. the highest number I could make with my mouth right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, I, I I feel that I I've actually riffed that number once. I think on this stage, or I might have said one hundred and seventy five, but it's like seventy. I, it's 70, like got the most syllables or something. Seventy five million it sound like more. to me. It feels like that amount of money you could. Uh, even if you weren't a financial wizard, you could figure out a way to live off of interest. For, yes, so that's that's like yes. that like like you, you maybe you have the small house in Sherman Oaks, but you're like <laughs> only I just put the seventy five million on a pile and the pile just radiates money that I live off of every day. So I I probably wouldn't do that. I'd probably buy a dumb fucking gold boat that sank. <laughs> but then Look you got a gold sh- boat. Then you got to make another <laughs> shit video. <laughs> I made a gold boat. Yeah, you you got to get on that shit video money. Oh, one more detail because is that is that Cody had you know she gave him a shout out or whatever she showed like a f- frame grab or something like that on her Instagram and he he uh, messaged her and said thanks for the shout out like like he was appreciative of her getting the word out lest anybody think for some reason that a guy that sells this service wants to keep it on the down low I, I, I and and is somehow going to be hampered by this uh, getting out. You know how much shit is on his phone screen. I, 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 it's just I, shit particles all over his fucking phone screen. He's a he's. A, I'm telling you. Well, he has you're, that you're gonna, I I feel bad that this is the last episode because it's because <laughs> because if, in episode 361 there would be a lot of people coming back on the show to say I can't believe it, but you're right. He seems fastidious and pleasant, and I'm in his. <laughs> I'm rooting for him. He seems like a wonderful man that I want to be yeah, happy. Levy, Levy just came out and showed me a clip, and uh, his if that's his flaccid dick, it's it's a pretty it's a pretty good side, pretty like it's a big dick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. His willingness to be nude, I get. <laughs> he probably does that for free. Yeah, but why the poop? I don't get it. My friends that were in a band. You're talking uh, about it. My, my friends, I I I, I grew up with. Uh, there's a band called Croms, a C R M, uh, with an umlaut for no reason, and uh, they're like a, a grindcore, like like death metal band. And you know Crom? Oh fuck yeah! Oh fuck! One fuck, person. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, they they would they, they would throw these parties, and they had a DVD. No, no, sorry, like a VHS tape, and it, it said six six six. Do not watch on it. And it was oh, a poop. It, it was a poop video, and if you watched it, you barfed, like like you like, like it was the most volatile thing I've ever seen. And it was a guy. It was not black and white, but the color was so bad that it was almost black and white. And, and VHS, yes, thank you, sir. Yeah. Right, Look you, at you, this, you faking, <laughs> you faking. Anybody could have said VHS. Yeah. Name one Krom song, yeah, bruh. Yeah. Name, <laughs> name one Krom song. Name one Krom song, bruh. Name one Krom song. <laughs> they're, 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 if, if you you got to go find Krom. They, they, they started their band as a joke, but they uh, the, Krom was uh, uh, Conan the Barbarian's god. And so one of their songs was Fuck You, Wood Pusher, because he had to push a stick around and... and uh, and there was a Grace. Don't you say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> One song is called Grace Jones Headbutt. Oh, Grace Jones Headbutt. Yeah, Grace Jones Headbutt. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, oh, man. It, I it, it goes like this Grace yeah. Jones <laughs> Headbutt. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was here. Uh, this is hard. You know, Diddy did the remix. <laughs> but they had, they, they had these parties 
well, one of the guys in the band is named Will, and his name was the Will of Crumb because he was the god. And uh, these motherfuckers did every drug, and uh, there was a t- uh, VHS tape, 666, 666, do not watch. And people would just see it and go, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that on. And there was a dude bent over on all fours and a girl next to his butt. Yes. Oh, yeah. And, she, uh, and he, started, he started to poop and she ate it up like it was like soft serve ice cream. Oh. And, and, uh, so spoiler alert. Congratulations on so- flying out here. <laughs> oh, 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 cheap laughs. Oh, I love them. Oh. Oh, they're like scrambled eggs. I can attack a whole day now. Carbohydrate surface laughs. Fucking Snickers bar blood sugar laughs. Well, uh, I mean, long story short, she, 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 looked, she looked pretty unhappy. And uh, you watch that, you watch four seconds of that, and you have to walk outside and vomit. And uh, yeah, that, there, there's, there's an audience for that sort of stuff. And you found it, and now you and Cody share that with, it's, with, with uh, you. But I, I believe I've seen that video or one like it, and Oof. I remember physically gagging because it is the sight of it's the thing that makes Oof. you it makes you wretch. Hey, hey, here's the bummer. Uh, hey, I, I, uh, here's the oh, thing. Yeah. Here's, the, here's where it gets mm-hmm. telling on yourself. Troublesome. Jeff. Telling on yes, yourself. If you're Canadian or uh, UK, yeah. Uh, it, the, the, the real uh, sad part is that they don't like it. <laughs> yeah, like, that, it, it, if if they were into it, you go like, okay. These people just they, they like to party, yeah. <laughs> like that's their thing. But but the, the, this this guy and this how gal, do you know the guy doesn't like it? Is he going? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, 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 I just remember the the so sorry. We gotta make there rent. Was, there was Are you all right back there. There was 100 so percent sadness. Oh. There was all sadness, but then. I'm really uh, embarrassed. They, they go back at it and they do it again, and it's like it's just come on, you guys. You like, watched like, all of that, though, huh? <laughs> so, I, 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 so you, you watched, watched all of it? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> who likes to party? I would say, I would say that this clip had uh, third act troubles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think the third act kind of broke down. Uh. It, on that, so don't watch a poop video is what I'm telling you. On about. that same VHS tape, is there then a like little person? No. Uh, no. Por- okay. What, do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, a, that was yeah. a tape you had. Yeah, that was a tape that I had. <laughs> okay. Where, 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 yeah. it, it was just like. I, I, st- I started to feel like I was a bad person. No, no, for a no, while no. There was a, we were watching a tape that was just, it started off as public access, like stuff that just got weirder and weirder and more and more degraded as clips were, it was like bad stand up auditions. And then all of a sudden it turns into black and white and blah, 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 blah. And there was a little person d- dressed up in makeup and a dress and doing like tap dancing and it was really. But 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 on the same tape, I'm talking about a t- I was trying to like the same I was trying bill. to triangulate a tape that that I recall having uh, disgusting I've, I've, like I've coprophilia. Ne- I've never kind watched of. a poop video with you two. I've, I was it was a separate poop video. Yeah, it was I'm a, starting I, to feel like y'all are the police, and this is a lie you're telling me to get me to confess <laughs> to something. Yeah, I didn't fucking do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we well, know you ate the poop. Now come on. You, uh, yeah, all right, moving on. I think that's a fingerprints are on we the toilet it. bowl. I was I, I was playing. So Cody and I, you know, Co- 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 Cody, uh, our, our, my my niece to be, my common law niece uh, Maya. What is she? Three. I think she's three now. Um, absolutely adorable. Common law niece. Because uh, because I've been with Co- we haven't set a date for our wedding, but like you know, she's as good as my niece. She's as good as niest. Um, and uh, I, I, it's, it's weird. To, I don't know how to describe her, her title, you know. So I just keep going like my niece to be <laughs> pre niece, pre niece. Uh, she calls me uncle. Uh, oh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we we uh, she we, like we we were playing with her, me and Cody, uh, 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 a couple nights ago, and then uh, you know like uh, turns into like a, a make believe kind of game. About how uh, Cody's sick and she's uh, a, a doctor, but she she was like, she it was like it was just such a, such a weird like because uh, she kept 
like C- Cody and I were brother and sister, and a uh, uh, little three year old Maya was was calling her. She was she was acting as the doctor that was taking care of Cody, but she was also both our daddy and our mommy. <laughs> and she kept sending me to school, and it was really weird because she had all of these like she was like she she had no patience for any kind of like she would she would be like. She, she's going, guess what, to, to uh, Cody. She's like, you're really sick. Oh, no. You're really sick. And then she'd look at me and go like, you got to go to school. <laughs> and then I'd go like, I'd go like oh, okay, I'm going to go to school. And she's like, okay, now you're at school. And I'm like, it's over there. And she, I'd, I'd sit in the corner. And, and then she's like, learn your ABCs. You're really sick. <laughs> and, then, and then she's like, okay, school's over. Like, like there was nothing. I was like, I just got here. I just like, like. And then I'd come back, and it was just like this weird cycle, like this weird simulator that was being run by this three-year-old who it doesn't understand any rules about timing, overkill, sadism, uh, um, uh, Munchausen by proxy syndrome, which was a big theme because she kept making Cody sicker and sicker. <laughs> but, and she was, cl- but it was clear, like she was, emo- she was like, she, it, she gradually like kept escalating in terms of like the empathy that she was having for Cody. Like it was like a, the game she wanted to play was like that she was like, she was like, it's okay, it's okay. And Cody, Cody's like, oh, I feel bad. <laughs> I'm sick. And then she was like, it finally, like, after like five iterations of like my my weird life where I, I am <laughs> as I as I kept commenting, I'm like, I, I'm I feel like I'm wasting the 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 better parts of my life while my sister's at home dying. I <laughs> I'm I I'm 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 learning the ABCs and my teacher's three, so like half of the alphabet is QRS, like like <laughs> She's like, A-B-Q-R-S-T-B, I put W-Q-R-S. Like, she doesn't, I mean, she's whoop, whoop. Um, but it's, it's her curriculum, and it's a, it's a school district with one student, and the, the school day is 10 seconds long. But, I, like, after five iterations, they come, come back to the bed, which is our house, and, 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 and Maya looks at Cody and goes, hey, guess what? And Cody's like, what? He's like, you're dying. Oh, no! <laughs> What the You're going to die. <laughs> and Cody's like, oh, no. And I'm like, does that mean I can stop going to school? <laughs> and she goes, yeah. Yeah, she's dying. So you stay home from school. And, and, and then, and then the? she, like, she nurses Cody through. She's like, it's okay. It's all right. It's going to be okay. Uh, uh, and, and, then, and then Cody died. She's, she, she goes, guess what? What? You're dead. <laughs> And then she said, so then Cody said, she killed Cody. And then, and then it was like, wow, uh, do we call a mortician or I don't know what I'm now yeah. allowed to, like, I don't know if her parents will be like, you taught her about death. <laughs> she thinks that's sleeping. I, I don't, I don't, now I don't know what I'm, I'm like. And then she's like, let's give her some more medicine. And just, she's like, she's like, 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 like lotion. Cause it's a hotel room. She puts lotion on Cody's forehead. That's like medicine for dying. And, and Cody, Cody like blinks her eyes and goes like, I'm alive. I'm alive. And Maya goes, Hey, guess what? What? You have to go to school. <laughs> Yeah, it was. Uh, it's pretty fun. I Wait, mean, so, like, I, so is she a good person or a bad person? I yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't I don't I don't I don't actually believe that human beings have a moral conscience. I, I believe. Where that would we, a three year old get like like the the motivation to say you're dying or you're sick? Like, did, did she go through something like recently? I, well, I don't. I, well, I don't know. I, I'm not a good enough uncle to know if maybe she lost a goldfish and like had had a, or but she you know like yeah. like somewhere between all the Peppa Pigs and the and the and the movies that her parents are watching or like all the other kids in kindergarten or whatever. It's like you know you're picking up on our mythology, which is about death and life. Does she watch YouTube? I hope not, but, okay, but like I, I, her parents are really good at keeping. Did she like, ever take a turd out and start making a heart on somebody's chest? <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, she, she like I I I I like I, I, I the, the, if I was ever gonna have a kid, it would only be out of the selfish motivation of like what a great like audience. Like there, there's just like your your bits could be so you could do such bad. I, I got a bit that I do with my nephew that I've been doing for about three years now. Where whenever I see him, I go. Hey, where's my money? (laughs) 
And he's like, he's like six, and he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I go, no, you said that the last time, where's my money? And he's like, I don't have any money. I go, you better get my money now. Uh, and, it's I'm like, a, I'm a, and his parents are just like, I'm so confused. What, what is, is this a joke? What do, you, do you ever say the amount, or is it just vague? No, no, no. <laughs> it's just, I want my money. Where's my money? And at one time, for some reason, I had like a wad of, of cash in my wallet. I had 20s and 1s. And uh, and I opened it up and I go, hey, I'm just kidding. Here, let me give it. And then I pulled out a receipt and I gave it. Hey, can you throw this out for me? <laughs> That's <laughs> really mean. <laughs> yeah. It's a receipt from Gilson's. A... Can you throw this shit out for me? <laughs> My nieces and nephews have this game called There's Uncle Brandon. And for some reason, they played it in front of me. Yeah. And it's whenever they see a black homeless person. <laughs> what? Somebody Thank tell you. him. <laughs> Thank you all so much. I hope your nieces and nephews are black. Because <laughs> then it helps a little bit. I brought my way bit? into a white family oh. as soon as I got money. <laughs> and do you just like, oh, do you try to I educate? Was like, I said, who the fuck taught you this game? <laughs> yeah. And, and, it you, was and you shake my a bottle sister. and a paper bag at the <laughs> My fucking sister was like, there's Uncle Brandon out there in LA homeless. <laughs> oh, it's because she's she's so provincial and yeah. you're also, you're you're Mr. LA. You're, but also don't you always just wear a suit all the time? You, know, you always look good. You see a lot of homeless black dudes in blazers. <laughs> <laughs> don't lie, don't lie. <laughs> You do. You see a lot of well. It's all about the t-shirt people. underneath. You got to look past the blazer. If it's like a like a Britney Spears concert shirt from '93. <laughs> so congratulations. That, that could be that. Could no, be you a wore a, guy. you wore a motherfucking bow tie. Is, 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 is that, that's a tied one. You didn't. That, that's not a clip on. That's a real bow tie. It's a real bow tie. One. Um. You know, Nation of Islam taught me that uh, Allah has many things planned. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, you know how to tie a, you know how to tie a bow tie and how to make a bean pie. You gotta, you gotta, yeah. Final calls will be passed out throughout the audience. These people don't know what the fuck the final call is, <laughs> but God love you. Google it. Google you guys it. referenced the five percenters in the in the. Oh, that room. was me. Yeah, I brought up the five percenters because I've been watching the Wu Tang show on Hulu. It's great. So I've been thinking about. The Do you 5%. love it? I think uh, it's actually, I, I think it's really bad, but I like it a lot. Oh, really? Yeah. You think it's bad? Why? I do. I think like you know, uh, I like them. Yeah. So I like seeing all the fantastical stories that didn't really happen right, in right, the projects yeah. with them. Yeah. But uh, there's, a, there's a lot of not great acting in it. <laughs> oh. All right. I thought you'd seen it, right, Shrab? I thought I it, loved it. I, I thought it was yeah, really good. Yeah, because, okay, you were acting like you hadn't seen it, but you, I thought you recommended no. it to me. I did recommend it, yeah. It's good. Do you like them? I, I, I thought it was I thought, really... You know, I know I'm supposed to. I don't You know don't any, really? I, I, don't, if, I don't... If you don't really like them, you might not really like the show. Well, I don't, I don't, I'm not familiar enough with anybody outside Tori Amos to be like, I like them, I don't like them. Right. Like, Would you watch a Tori Amos eight-part uh, fictional one-hour drama on Hulu? <laughs> oh, yeah, fuck yeah, he would. He would fucking would. <laughs> yeah. What would it be called? <laughs> yeah, probably like ca cabbages in, in, in turtles racing or something. Nope. And like people would be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and she'd be like, mm, that's my girls. Hey, Spencer. What up? Hey, hey guys. <laughs> uh, since we're wrapping up the old uh, Harmon Towns, uh, we found you in a lucky moment. Uh, what's your feelings about uh, walking away from this? I hate it. Yeah? Yeah, I'm sad, you guys. <laughs> oh. oh, no. Are hey, you guess really? what? Really? You're yeah, dying. So, oh, no. Oh. See, I think you're being sarcastic. Because this no, isn't very no. different than you sound when you're ecstatic. No, I'm sad. I can't, I'm really tell if you're sad. Being, I can't tell if you're being for real or you're, you're doing a bit right now. It sucks, you guys. <laughs> I think he's being for real. It's true. <laughs> I'm being honest. It, 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 it feels like only yesterday that you raised your hand when Dan asked, uh, is anybody here a, a dungeon master? And you raised your hand, and then here, here we are after all these years. It really does feel like yesterday. Am I ever going to see you again? No. 
This is. I mean, here's the thing. It's like I don't know if I'm ever going to see any of you guys ever. I'm going to send you guys. This like is a, my way of see, hanging out with you. Well, Spencer and I, and I, I we, we don't have the name of it yet. We don't know exactly when and where and what. But we, uh, we have a venue, and uh, Spencer and I. We have a venue. We we do have a venue. What is it? We're, it it's uh, I'll, I'll drop it. Uh, follow us, Spencer and I, and somebody else. Uh, it's going to be like. We're going to make a new podcast, and uh, you guys are all welcome to come to it. Oh, shit. And I'll be promoting it at the, at the Mexican place next door, but, which uh, I hope is not your venue because they're very rarely open. No, no. It's, it, it, it's, it, it is odd. Well, I would have learned they, their name. It's a very show-busy place. I mean, it's going to be groovy. Uh, it might be monthly. It might, might not be weekly, but we'll, we'll make it uh, good, and you guys can all come. And uh, I would like to request that it, it be all commercials because I... <laughs> The, the that, thing that I regret most about ending this podcast is the commercials. That's what, that's what I'm going to miss the most is doing ads with Spencer. It's the fucking best part of the thing. Church and, uh, and Spencer doing the commercials is the, is the fucking greatest thing. Yeah, it's thing. too bad that it would be impossible for us to continue to do that in any capacity. You we, know? But we, what we do have to do, no matter where we go, we have to steal this desk from uh, Dynasty Typewriter. That's So you fair. can sit there with your hand on your head. Why, why the hand on the head thing? What's, what's this posture? The answer to that question, <laughs> all questions can be revealed... On the new podcast. On the on the no, I did. I wrote a D and D module though that people should rip. Whoa! Buy. Yeah. It's called Color of Chaos, and it's on DM's Guild. It's what, shitty. What, what, and what, what if we just it. call it special? What if we just call it Town? There's nobody's name involved. It's just Town. Wow! What if we did the thing that I said on air before? Yes, exactly. That would be a I'm funny I'm just trying joke. to remind everybody. Oh, no, I know, I know. It's, it's a good thing. It's happening thing. already. All I'm saying is that buy my module. <laughs> buy your module? <laughs> Give me money. That's that the only reason. Why do you, you? This is the only reason I'm here. I don't care about any of you fucks. <laughs> I'm just here for the fucking money. Not true. All right. I want that money. Dude. Check, son. Love an honest man. Not Get true. that money, homie. That's what I'm sad about. All this fucking money. What's up? Uh, we got Dave Klein over here, everybody. Yoop, give me a yoop. What up, Dave Klein? What's, how's it going, baby? Oh, it's a beautiful thing. Congratulations to a final Harmontown, to oh, a very shit. special sanctum you carved out with your own mitts without any fucking permission. Shout out, shout out to an international audience of maniacs and beautiful people and spirits that you can hear in, from across oceans. Whoa. I heard, I, I heard, I heard it personally from three thousand miles away from the rugged hills of Shaolin in Staten Island. Whoa! I wasn't living there; it was a Manhattan situation at the time. But I really did hear Dan, and Spencer, and Jeff, and Schraub, and Brandon, and Mike Eagle later on. But back then, Mike Eagle wasn't there yet. It's but true. You could hear something very special whenever you put this on your ear holes. And you could count on a certain amount of brotherhood, honesty, love, friendship that you guys were gracious, brave, and fucking bold enough to put on display. Woo! Yay. You, I would suggest you. that a lot of us came, came to know you guys as strange brothers and friends. And I would like to say that in the dark times, we have all gone through you guys did a real public and universal and cosmic service by putting out this wonderful life raft that you could see how bright it was with your eyes closed, listening real hard. So thank you for that. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 and uh, Dave Klein. If I can follow up on that, I, I've talked to a lot of people that I've met at the drawing room or here or around town. A lot of people said that they went through depression or some kind of you know some, some mental stuff. And for some reason, our our silly little show was like really important to people. I did. I, I've never quite understood that, but I, I I've I've talked to so many people that that that's the reason why they dig it, they listen to it, and they travel all the way out here. Uh, like clap if you came from way far away. I know there's people from uh, Italy yeah. and Spain and Australia and in England and like all over the map. Also, we got Jesse Kemp. Jesse, what, what yeah. up, Jesse? Oh yeah. man! Yeah. Hey. Hey, listen, I can't, I can't follow that. That was brilliant. That was brilliant. But uh, if I could, since this is still a podcast, people can't really see us, can they? No. no, no, no there's, there's cameras. I mean, there's some cameras. Of course, I saw a there's ring cameras doorbell. Everywhere. There's cameras everywhere. There's cameras everywhere. They're all over. There's this not a lot. This is true. But, but you know what? I'm going to pass this to my assistant, Arnold, who's a major yeah. 
Harmontown freak. Arnold is is what got me into this, and um, as is Jeff. But Arnold, uh, can you say a couple words about uh, Harmontown? Give it up for Arnold. Okay. Arnold. Arnold. Oh my God! Oh oh my God! Of course, I would say something about Harmontown. <laughs> Um, uh, let me tell you this. Uh, a couple of things about Dan Harmon. The man likes slacks. The man likes shorts. And the man likes jean shorts. And he's very particular about his cut of jean shorts. Let's give it up for Arnold, everybody. Hey. Arnold. Arnold. I All right. These are totally well, Just out. three more minutes. No, 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 no. Let's hear Listen. him out. I want to tell you guys something really quickly. This is Jesse back again, not Arnold. Oh, darn. Where's Arnold? <laughs> Just in case you couldn't tell, even though I second what Arnold was saying about the jean shorts, Dan, in the summertime. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I would come to Harmontown here, the Dynasty typewriter, just to see Dan in his beautiful summer sack and his summer, summer shorts. Sack. I've been talking about <laughs> Dan in jean sack. shorts. Is sublime. I mean, he starts putting them on around May, and well into September, he's still wearing jean shorts. I'm going to miss seeing Dan in jean shorts. But yeah. let me just say this really quickly. I don't want to take up too much time. This is like the last cheers. This is, this is already a million times better than the last Seinfeld, even though I love Seinfeld. <laughs> but... I'm going to say, this. we're going out with a bang. You guys, I'm going to tell you that backstage, we have a musical tribute. Beck is here. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. All right? And if that's not enough, Arnold back. we have Willie Nelson here. Awesome. Oh, shit. Also, Woody Harrelson, uh, uh, Matthew uh, McConaughey. Uh, uh, MC, MC Arnold's going to be in the house. MC yeah. Arnold. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I could do that. But oh. hey. You know, I'm Arnold. I, I just, you know, I'm into jean shorts. Sue me. But listen, I got to tell you this really quickly, two important things, and then I'll zip it. But I cannot, I, now that I hijacked this for a minute, I can't let you guys out of here without knowing about an amazing project that Dan is launching in March. Dan has his very own wine. It's a rosé coming out. It's called Dan Harmon's Third Testicle. Whoa. Now, this is a wine like no other wine. And let me tell you that uh, up in Dan's Napa uh, vineyard, basically there was a mishap with the grape crusher and uh, some testosterone got mixed in with the wine, so wait, to speak. Hey, Jesse, uh, hang on. Speaking of wine, Ricardo, you here? Where you at, baby? Ricardo! Ricardo, you brought wine from your hometown uh, outside of Florence, Italy, right? Yeah. Can, we, can, can you bring it up? Okay. I'm well, sure oh, will bring it Ricardo, out. please come on stage because uh, when, when he when he gets up here, give it up for young Italian Steve Coogan. Yeah. Steve Coogan. Steve Coogan. He looks he looks way too much like Steve Coogan. Uh, what's up, Ricardo? Can I see Tonya? Bienvenuto. What's happening? Oh, it's here's the, the, oh, here's wine. the wine. Should we yeah. leave? Look at this. Yeah. We so, gotta, yeah. Okay. So this this is like for all of you. But Jeff called dips on it, so... Yeah, it's fine. I think it's just going to be his. I'm going to take it. But, like, it's from... I don't know if it's the best one, but it's from my hometown and the, Italy. The motherfucker uh, looks like Steve Coogan. Look at this guy. He looks... I, I, just, I just saw... Uh, what's, what's the uh, the movie where the... the uh, Tropic, Tropic Thunder. Thunder. He looks exactly like Italian Steve Coogan. Sure. Are, are, are there any... Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Ricardo. You're welcome. Um, uh, yeah. Piacere. Uh, is it, uh, do, do we have any, because there's all dudes on stage, are there any women fans of, the, are, are, of any like old school? What does Arnold have to say about Steve Coogan? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I forgot how Arnold talked, but I think that he's, <laughs> he's, even, he's even more handsome than an Italian Steve Coogan. But I got to tell you, I mean, this wine looks magnificent. And it's got a picture of, uh, what would you describe that? It looks like a Playboy uh, a bunny gone goth. <laughs> Playboy Bunny Gone Goth. What's up? This is amazing wine. Ricardo is an amazing man. And I'm just going to zip it because everyone on the stage is a legend. Will, Brandon, um, Jeff. Um, Rob. Of course, Rob. Dan. Dan. Spencer. Spencer and Richard yeah. fucking Branson. Yeah. <laughs> right over there. Richard oh, shaved for this event, but... <laughs> Fucking Rich. Yo. Yeah. But this is this is you uh, thank you, Richard Branson, for being here because you reminded me of what I wanted to say. Because when I think of Richard Branson, I think about uh Jeff Bezos 
and I'm gonna say this. Here, I think the reason why on planet Earth right now we have so much bad shit, and I don't even think we would have climate change depending on this planet if it weren't for tiny penis energy. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Let, me, let me say this. If Jeff Bezos had a big dick, would he have to own all that money? I don't oh. think so. You know about Jesse. Jesse, can, but, I, can what I, I'm getting at is that you, Dan What's Harmon has at? always had big dick energy. The world needs more big dick energy, yeah. and yeah. I am scared that once this podcast ends, that we're gonna not have as much big dick energy. Let's give air. it up for Arnold, everybody. Arnold. Oh, Arnold. But final thing out of my mouth, I have a feeling this is not the last oh. Harmon Town ever. Shut your no. ass up while you still talking. <laughs> <laughs> I Please use your more. lips and just start walking. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Motherfucker, you got to shut your mouth. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, no, no. Keep, it, keep it going, Mike. I would keep singing, but I don't want to do what this motherfucker did. No. <laughs> and take up too much time it with that good. bullshit. I like it. I thought this was just extras, that this was going to be edited it out. Is. No, and no, it's all hey. good. They can't edit their lives. Oh, you're right, 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 you're right. They, but no, no, Mike, Mike, let, let's do a song. That we, is we, why we, Dan Harmon is Dan Harmon. Jesse. I'm zipping it. Sh- 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 you gave him a mic. Gave- what did you think was going to happen? He's doing everything. <laughs> it's all good. I need the microphone. Will you stop talking until that? <laughs> you know, when this show first started, I didn't think it would last seven weeks. You know? <laughs> well, look at us now. Do you remember what the very first Harmon Tone, like what you talked about? Did you ever, when's the last time you listened to the very first well, Harmon Tone? Well, I, I haven't. I, th- I, I, uh, it was the I, premise but, of going but, to the moon, wasn't it? But, but it, we, it started as, it, we, we weren't podcasting right away. And in my memory, although we, could, we tend to conflate these things, but I believe it was like we were doing the strictly live and we were recording them just in case. And uh, kind of off and on, the recording was working and stuff with the, uh, and uh, it was the Chevy Chase thing that kind of like right. was a tipping point because that was a live show that was not to be that was not a podcast. So we were doing the show for a while. I think that that's what Jeff referenced. It was monthly. Um, it was like a, but you know, I still had that old school like L.A. kind of the. Uh, perception of like oh there's all these shows in LA where you can go see Harry Dean Stanton play a trombone or Jeff Goldblum like fuck a duck or something like and it's not it's not part of their real it's lives show. it's not part, it's not it's not it's, it doesn't end up in nobody TMZ. played the bone like Harry Dean <laughs> But then I made the awful, judgmental, the horrible judgment mistake of like playing Chevy's voicemail into the microphone. That somebody was recording it in Edward Leak, and th- th- that was part of the decision to be like, okay, well, let's just start podcasting because if anything, that'll be a shield. Because if you it, it, kind of like if you if you want things to be out there, then people start to ignore it more. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, well, there's five thousand hours of this guy. Get that on the mic, yeah. There you go. It all ended. Um, I was so excited uh, watching uh, Adam Goldberg's face during Jesse Camp uh, talking because it was like J- J- Adam was like, "I fucking did it. I finished first. Um, uh, the uh, yeah, I can't remember what the question was, but it was like yeah, there was a I don't remember what the first it was the it was the whole moon thing. It was just the idea of like alienation and nobody tell me to tie my shoes and all that stuff. Which is like you know, it's like yeah, that's the thing. Is like I don't, I don't really feel that way anymore. I'm not like, uh, hey, leave me alone. Don't tell me what to do. I'm right about everything. Everyone else is wrong. Kind of guy anymore. And that's become an actual, like, point of view that you can't even really defend, even when you do feel that way. Like it's not charismatic anymore. I, don't, I, I and I don't, I don't always feel that way. But sometimes I do. And it's like it's just sort of like. You know, yeah, I I don't want to talk in circles, but that's part of the thing is sort of like, who the fuck am I? It used to be very simple. It was like, I'm a, I'm a baby, you know? Uh, I just want to, I just want, I just want to like kind of whine and like say, what about me? And it was therapeutic for me. So that was the the answer, the sincere answer to your question. When, 
uh, you know, they always say, if you keep a journal, don't go back and read your journal. When do you think you'll go back and listen to some of these episodes? I don't know. I would. I don't know if I ever would because, like, uh, I don't know. Like, I don't. I don't really want. If Chris McKenna and I get way drunk enough, we'll like maybe we'll like we'll, we'll start watching Community episodes. Uh, and we'll get like halfway through the D and D one, and then we'll pass out. But it's like it, 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 there's something about revisiting stuff that's like too like I don't know because it's like it's, but you know it's like like it, 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 like it's funny that you're holding the wine bottle. Mm. Drink the uh, wine. D- what what wino del Ricardo? Oh that's no, that's not even a. That's like he's not even really Italian, is he? <laughs> wino del Ricardo. That's Spanish. All right. I'm just kidding. That's not what it says. This, this label's in when crayon. Did you, when did you like feel like with Harmontown that you were like going, yes, that was it. That's, that's the, th- this is the This is the, delicious, and the I love show. the Tilda Swinton on the label. The, the, <laughs> it does look like a Tilda Swinton. Uh, sorry, Let, Rob. What, what, bring you, it, when you were, I mean, like it started off with this thing about we're going to colonize the moon and whatever, but then eventually I feel like you hit like a stride of this is what a, a typical Harmontown is. Was it when you were at uh, Meltdown? Was it at the castle? Was it here? When did you feel like, oh, okay, this is this is this is working. This is the pattern. I don't know. I never really felt that way. I don't know. I guess I guess early on at, at, at Meltdown, I felt like there was a, gr- a groovy thing going that kind of made a little bit of sense. I, I think, and I think that after Meltdown closed. A lot of us in the comedy community, what a lame thing, comedy community. But a, a lot of a lot of LA comedy people that had performed at Meltdown kind of all of a sudden realized, as one does, that you know how much of the the show was that that venue. Yeah. Um, that 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 Harmontown was kind of sort of inextricably defined by the wooden pillars in the in the room and this. And I, you know, back in those days, I was always like, God damn it, if we could just get rid of these pillars and make this room five times bigger, we could put cameras everywhere and then I could show slides of my dog. And it was like always like driven by this thing. There was never a full embrace of the podcast of it all. Um, it was just a show that became a podcast. And then the, the, the other funny transformation that happened is I, I, it's so weird to remember this because I can't, it's sort of like the way I remember sometimes I smoked a pack and a half a day for like, like and then I'm like, cause someone will say, you know, my, do you mind if I smoke in here? And I'll be like, yeah, I don't care. And I'm like, holy shit, I smoked like a chimney. I, I can't believe this, but like originally when we were recording the episodes, I would sit with uh, Feral Audio founder Dustin Marshall and we would like, I would go over to his house, I would book sessions that would last like three or four hours where we'd go through the entire recording and edit the ums and uhs out, (laughs) basically. Like I was like, oh, no one wants to listen to somebody like stammer and stutter and and say the same thing over and over when again. When did you stop doing that? I, I, don't, I don't remember. It just it just like we just got I exhausted. I remember you, you, you doing, and and I can totally relate because I would be like, uh, I would, I would want to do that. Too, it wasn't. It wasn't out of vanity. Go. I assure you, it was like it was. That's what's so strange to think about because I'm the laziest guy in the world and also the most narcissistic. I'd be like, yeah, listen to me, the uh, the uh, figure it out, whatever. But like. It, at the time, it was like, oh, that's what you're supposed to do. You recorded it live, it's sloppy, clean it up, or don't put it in people's ears, you terrible person. Like, be, res- be responsible. And, it, if, and it, I, I'm sure there was just this point where it was like, well, if I have to keep doing that, then I have to stop doing the show because it's too much work. It's like the amount of time I need to spend on actual shit. But it's just f- so funny that I would go through the show and go like, no, no, oh, I, you no, know what? Like, I, I, I'm being kind of redundant there. Yeah. <laughs> what was the goal? <laughs> it's such a weird. It's yeah. it's crazy to look back like like because we we just do this kind of silly thing. We we just come here. We don't talk about it. The first few episodes, I think, Dan, like you and I, like we we'd, we'd have like kind of a like a plan, like a trajectory that we we're gonna do, and then we just we gave that up pretty quickly. But then like Robin Williams was on the show, like like. And like, and we we wrote a song with Eric Idle, and he sang it. Like, like, the, like some pretty crazy stuff has happened, and it really has just been this lazy thing. But like, it, it makes me very happy 
and kind of confused that everybody likes it so much. Like, uh, so I, I really want to thank everybody who's like listening or is here tonight, who traveled. Like, it's it's pretty crazy. Uh, it's kind of emotional that you got, you guys all dug it so much. So thank I mean, you. I so can much. definitely explain the. Uh... I definitely understand as a podcast listener, and, and but it's it's kind of worth noting like that the word podcast is something that in eight years it's like a new word, and that at the beginning of these eight years, this decade that we've just been through, I remember being in Erin McGathy's car and uh, her iPod, uh, uh, thank you, playing. Uh, this guy started talking about how he and Natasha had just broken up. And uh, and but the podcast was going to continue to be what it was. And hey, breakups just happen, man. That's all. It's just like, look, man, things just happen. And I'm like, what? after like ten minutes of just listening to this guy talk, I was like, what the fuck is this? It's not a book on tape or radio. So what is this? And she's like, oh, it's Duncan Trussell. And. Uh, <laughs> Um, and he had just broken up with Natasha Leggero. They were doing a podcast together for 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 a while, and then he was just he was explaining this his what was really going on in his life, which is the, in in which he would later do as he got diagnosed with cancer, as his mother died, and uh, Duncan was also, I believe, the first podcast I was ever on as a guest. Um, and uh, I really want to give him a, a big big shout out because uh... also uh, wh- wh- while you're on that, Dan. Um, Emily Gordon, uh, she she's the one that made this happen. Like Emily needs to be like she, she yeah, yeah. she's the she she told Dan have a podcast and uh, at Nerd Mountain Meltdown. That that that's why this all started. Yeah, but also like like Adam Goldberg and and Anatoly and all and then Dave Klein and like like all, and uh, Vega and all, all the people that we've met that have come up. Like throughout throughout the years, and also like I we I would never have met Spencer Crittenden without without yeah. this show. Thank you to me. Yay. And Chris and Sarah. Yeah. But, but, and, and Chris that's and Sarah. I mean I'm gonna forget like a million names of, of of people that we've just kind of like pulled out of the crowd back in the days when we would just say like hey like like anybody want to come up and talk, and we've no. met uh, we've met a lot of beautiful wonderful people. I'm gonna get sad. Uh, <laughs> before you, uh, before you get sad, uh, I'm just gonna shout out a couple people. Oh, oh no, shit. not your comedically long list of weird <laughs> names. <laughs> Arnold. Shut. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Splendid Docs, Mr. Johnny Dangerously. Sinister Silence, <laughs> Devin Cook, Joanna Curtis, Hill Prozac, Jeremy Myers, Paul Nolan, Heather Hooks. God bless you all. Hey, Thank Paul, you. You, got, you got a whip on you right now? Thank you so much for your support. Paul, I mean, the show's not over yet, but Paul, we, we got, we got uh, headroom for you to, to do some whips for us. Paul, Paul the whip guy, uh, yeah. This is Y'all need to cool. tell me about this, this shit too. Makes whips, uh, and, 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 and if you want a whip, what? get one. I've not been adequately like warned about any time. of this shit. I'm about to step back four to six feet and let y'all have all the whip fun y'all want to have. Yeah. Why are we? You're safe, Mike. Whip? You're safe. Uh-uh, I'll be watching Watchmen. Yeah, I ain't with none of this shit. There's audience. <laughs> I forgot He's about. He's got a cigarette. All right, wait. Yeah, do it. Wait. Oh. Yeah. It's a whip. It's a whip. Right. He's got a cigarette out. He's got a cigarette. For, for your it's listeners. a whip. What the he fuck? He whipped what? it. What? Cut the cigarette in half. That's how you quit smoking. You learn how to whip. Yeah. Whip it What up, Paul? There he goes. California's fucking dangerous. Yeah. They got tall people. Now, yeah. Now, got Mike, I, Mike, I forget. Like, uh, what was the connection? What you, you met Dan where? Like, what, what was the, the intro we with you? We did Scott Rogowski's show That's together. That's right. Yeah, yeah he yeah. had his live show. He, was, he used to do the... Trivia HQ on Apple every day. Right. Um, but he had a show called Running Late, and I was doing music shit on there, and he had Dan on as a guest, and that's right. when we met. Now, we have t- uh, don't we have tapes? Like, Cherish, are you, that, are you out there? Yeah, we do. Uh, 
in the lobby, we, we got the tapes that you guys did together, right? Yeah, I, I produced a rap album by Dan. And there's tapes of it in the back. Also, it's, let's give it up for Church. He's been in all the uh, social media and, produ and production. Yeah. 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 And let's give it up uh, also uh, to Brendan. Uh, to Brendan, uh, the, the, Church and Brendan are the, are the two that make all the, all the commercials funny. And, he, and uh, Brendan does all the music, and Church is the one that makes it all happen. So give it up for if you. If you like the ads, it's Brendan yes. and the Church. And Nolan, Nolan Fabricus, who got all my friends in and has, has been the dude that has kind of been running this shit. And Zach uh, McKeever up there making the fucking beats happen and doing everything. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah we got, like, and also the people that I don't really know their names, but the, all the people that did the Dynasty Typewriter. Like, you guys have been, uh, what a cool yeah. venue this has been. Yeah, this is such a nice venue. Uh, shout out to Sarah Hill. Sarah Hill, hell yeah. Shout out to Chris Boroth. Chris Boroff, uh, Kevin Day. Yes. Yes, Kevin Day. Yes. yes. Every, everybody. If I'm forgetting anybody, uh, forgive me. But I, who? Steve, Steve Levy. Levy. Steve. The man. Can Steve we bring, can we bring Levy. Steve Levy on stage? Steve Levy, get the fuck out here. Yeah. Steve oh, Levy. Yeah. Hey. Steve ma, ma, Levy. Ma, 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 ma. Steve Levy. Hey, what everybody. up, Levy? How you doing, baby? Uh, I'm doing good. You've been I'm going right. through. Some, you, you said you're going through some, kind of some rough shit, right? Or, or should we not talk about that? Uh, it's you brought kind of a it bummer up, way to end the Jeff. show, right? I don't know, Jeff. Weren't you saying backstage that you had some great news you wanted to share with everybody? Just some heartwarming He's shit. He's pregnant. <laughs> no. What? You don't have great news? He was lying that you... Just... I was just lying. I was just making an ass out of myself in front of my closest friends. <laughs> hey, Levy, what, what are your, I like, say? top... You got a couple top moments, like top three, top two, top one? Um, that I've witnessed? <laughs> or that you haven't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, Dan, Dan peeing in, uh, live on stage... <laughs> Into a he, diaper. He into a, a diaper. diaper. In San Francisco. I had a, San Francisco. I had a fine... Dan wore, Dan wore Depends and peed into his Depends. It was like 40 minutes before the show, and Dan decided, what if I pissed live on stage? Well, that's... Come on. That's not how my thought process I believe works. that's exactly what happened. There was a shit story earlier I know with another at, person you admire, I'm so... We were at, like, exactly. I always approach it with a nuance. But you peed, and you were so happy about it. You were really stoked. You're like, oh, shit, I, I can just pee wherever I go now. I It, it started as this, because somebody think, would, had mentioned the new, the uh, people in Times Square when they, they wear diapers oh, for yeah, New yeah. Year's. And I, I was like, I, I come mentioned on. That, yeah. like, that's just peeing in your pants. Like, And then right. I, was, I, was like, I was like, I want to know what what these diapers are like. Yeah, and we were in Vesuvio, so I, right? Incredible. Remember we were it's like peeing into a portal. It vanishes. It's a whole ass mood yeah so so i had to run and find a place that had the nicest uh best looking adult diapers for dan to wear on stage i not because i insisted on anything other than adult diapers <laughs> apparently you just want me to look good while i'm peeing myself no no I, i'm you pretty didn't want the 8k diaper is what you're saying <laughs> But you peed, and, and the, the look in your... The, the, I just I think it's an 8K. I was an 8K yeah, diaper. Yeah. No, 8K. Oh, 8K. The look on your face <laughs> <was> while, <laughs> while you were peeing, you were, you, were so, you were so happy. You looked so just like completely like, oh, I can just pee in front of people. It's amazing. I'm telling I mean, it's like, look, baby boomers are the, the first modern generation to get that age where they need diapers, and so, of course, the diapers... Are now they look like the and 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 the technology behind them. I mean, we have them to thank for our nation's opi opioid addiction and like I was like the, the pills and the diapers are fucking NASA level because the because the people that invented the Beatles are shitting themselves and are in fucking pain. I can't wait to get old. Durr. I can't wait to piss just, like, hanging out. How was it, pissing on your it pants? It was incredible. Was it? Yes, because it was, like, every... Think about everything you do when you pee. Like, you know how <coughs> men, men are always, like, kind of, like... Cry. We kind of, like... <laughs> You know, we we fl we flaunt with uh, with with women. We're like we, you know, it's just like oh, we're we just like hey, it's no problem. You just whip it out. And you, I'm out of the bus driver again. Um, <laughs> it, it's like you 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 whip it out. You just like like whatever. And they got a squat, and it's a it's more of an ordeal for them to like just pee into a bush or the whatever. 
you have no idea how high maintenance what we have to do is until you experience just <laughs> standing in your pants and doing whatever you want. You can play a video game. You can talk to people. You can and just have you ever pee. worn these ever again? No. I mean, I don't have. I mean, you know, you don't have to, but and I get you a, could. Yeah, I left the stage a second ago to pee. I do wish I could have stayed. It would. Be, it's, it's, yeah. it's 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 truly like you, we've all peed in the shower. So you have this experience of like there's water all I have over. Never you. peed in the shower. Whoa. Sorry. Wait, wait. This I thought we were the, telling truths up here. This from the guy who doesn't wait, for me, like for me, oh, Mike, you, you, You've never peed in the I've shower. I've never peed in the shower. Is it because you're a gentleman, or because you're... the toilet's right there. <laughs> but peeing in the shower is like from the that's, shower. That, that's, that's your birthright. There's never been a time, I guess, when I didn't realize I had to pee until I was in the middle of a shower. But don't you get in the shower and the, the, you got the, the warm water rolling over you? And that you doesn't go, make me have to pee. It makes me have to pee. Okay, well that's just me then. Do women have to pee? In, do, do women pee in the shower? Yes. Okay. <laughs> that that was nearly unanimous. Yeah. Uh, so, I think they kind of live for it, honestly. Which is what, which is why men are usually not afraid to admit it because we've never been shamed by women for peeing in the shower because women are like the Christopher Columbus of peeing in the shower. <laughs> uh, women by by either like a, like because it's dark out there. Uh, by applause, who's what woman has never peed in the shower? Yeah, okay. Me give it you. up. A few. Now, can I ask one of you, like, why? Like, just because just you, you never had Women. to, or you think it's rude? It, it, it's dirty. I, but I you're in the shower? I think, I think and there's it's, soap. It's gross, is probably going to be the answer. Yeah. I don't, I don't right. think, I don't, I don't think people that have never peed in the shower are monsters. I don't. I, no, no, I, 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 yeah. I'm just saying. I'm you, not even against it. I just ain't never did it. You, uh, well, tonight you the, should try the, it sometime. Mike, maybe tomorrow. Who Mike, knows? Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> the fucking the, the night is young, baby. It's bright. I, hey then everybody. Um, uh oh. Oh, throw a beat down, Zach. Oh shit. Throw no, a beat no. down, Wait, Zach. You, it's a pee you, on song. Can you I hold? Think put a beat on me. before uh, you get peed on. Okay, well, it's me, MC Gun Control. Oh shit! Yes. Oh damn. MC. Give it up for MC I can't Gun Control. We are here at the final episode of Harmon Town, a platform I have used to spread my ambiguous message about gun violence. My name, as you know, is MC Gun Control, and the bit is you can't tell if I'm for or against it. <laughs> But there's also a part of an added meta bit about how forthright I am about that being my bit, which I personally enjoy. Um, but here's a, here's a little rap about gun control, which is also my name. The AK-47 is capable of killing 30,000 lives a second. It's the most devastating weapon ever available in stores. Yeah. Over 50 million handguns are in the houses. They're very, very popular. Handguns are popular. The most popular. Even more than blenders. I'm MC Gun Control. Bullets are are lethal. Bullets are lethal, more lethal than icicles. Even if they don't go through your eyeballs, which icicles have to do to be lethal. If you throw an icicle at a human, they'll get mad at you. They'll know what you are. They'll know you are far into the realm of enmity with them. They'll be like, hey, why'd you throw an icicle at me? They'll also probably think you're just throwing ice at them because the icicle will have broken up in the air. By the time it hits them, it will be cubes. They'll think you're just throwing ice at them in winter. Guns, on the other hand, can kill people regardless yeah. of the season or the intention. Yeah. 
M- MC Gun Control, yeah. Yes, thank you. you I'm know, MC Gun Control. You know MC Gun Control. Well, Mike, did Mike, you know guns are responsible for more deaths than <laughs> cancer, Jeff? I didn't know that. Mike, you got a beat? You, 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 you're looking at your thing there. That was his beat. Yeah, that, that was, was yours. That was, that yes. was all my, everything was all my fault. Right, let, 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 let's do one more then. Bullshit. Hey, I'm MC at 209. And I'm not feeling fine. You got 10 seconds to comply. With my rhythm, 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 rhythm. Ten. Yo, it's Nine. old Detroit. It's Eight. got a cancer called crime. Seven. That ain't no joint. Sick. Yo, I'm the Five. next step in law enforcement. Four. Fuck your mama so hard, Three. her pussy is engorging. Two. One. Sometimes I speak like a Shakespearean actor <laughs> to make a word rhyme. <laughs> her pussy was engorging. Roar! I can't walk downstairs. I roar like a lion. I'm stop motion animated, but I ain't crying. You can't see genie. That won't be reality because you need the texture to make you feel humanity. Coming through the animation, giving it character. Fucked your mama so hard, I needed an airplane hanger to hold all the jizz. Cause that's how fucking is. When you're in 209, you do that shit right. You never leave a single pussy hanging tight. You loosen, okay, you loosen up, okay, there he goes. Yeah. Wow, we really heard from all of the, the old beloved characters. <laughs> If I was if I if I was a reporter from Vulture doing a retrospective on our podcast, I would be extra impressed at this point, and I'm sure that article is going to turn out great. <laughs> but did I mention this already? Uh, pa- paste Paste Magazine, I think it was. Yeah. Pa- pa- why yeah, do they still paste. call them magazines? Um, uh, they 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 said we were you know they 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 uh, one of the best podcasts of the decade. I think I think I think you're kind of cheating when your podcast lasts a decade. I mean, it's like a weird thing for a podcast to be so old. So like we were we were in there. It's what, like when I won an Emmy for writing with? Oscars. What are we up there with? What else? I didn't read the article. Okay, probably Cereal. Splendid Table. I think I think number I'm one. I'm gonna read was, the Vulture uh, one though. Was uh, American This American Life is number one? I think. Fuck yeah. that. Well, whatever. <laughs> you know, that's because that's because I had an episode on there. Whoa. Oh, wow. God damn it. Way to make it about you. Way to make it about you. Jesus Christ. Dan, what, what's next for you? Poc- I always knew I'd end up do, on do, this do, American Do you want to do another podcast ever again, Dan? Or is this, is this it for you? Are you, are you, are you, are you just going to fuck off straight no, into the I'm gonna, I, 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 No, I think that, uh, honestly, like, uh, uh, it's not a fun answer, but the tr- uh, no, I can't wait to do more stuff. I just think that I'm just tired of... Uh, I'm tired of acting like I'm a product. Like so, like I think that 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 was a fun like surfing style for a while, and it doesn't it doesn't make as much sense anymore. And it, everybody matures at different rates, and it's like it's like a bingo card. Like you you knock out shit at different times. Some people are prodigies at shit, and then absolute morons at other stuff until they're seventy. I've never like done like actual just like. Hey, I think I'm gonna try to be funny and do a performance and try to make people laugh, kind of thing. I've always fallen back on the "Hey, look at who I am." A lot of a lot of great people have done that. Howard Stern and the the the, the, the like. Like we love we love that. There's a heavy tradition of like uh, the that's ah, the old white guy going like "Hey, look at me! I'm fucking sucking my thumb." But like I'm I'm I am bored with that and feel like also like if I, I would have to double down so much. I have a question. <laughs> yes, Can sir. somebody run for mayor of Harmontown? Yeah, uh, is, Can somebody it, run for mayor of Harmontown? A Town? special election? Oh, shit. I declare my candidacy oh, shit. for mayor oh, of yes. fucking Harmontown. Oh, shit. Yes. What? But, um, I, my I, first act as mayor would be to I, change I, the name. I, I second that emotion. What if, yeah, what if fucking just uh, Mike Eagle just becomes be fucking mayor Eagle of Town. I'm, I'm, I'm Eagle Shrub, Town. Shrub. 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 I can make some shit about me for seven years. As yeah. this town's Obama, I obviously cannot make an endorsement at this <laughs> stage. 
it would be catastrophic. This town's Obama. <laughs> Give me a beat. This town's Obama. Okay. No, do it. This town's Obama. Never gonna fuck a mama. Yo, every town's got its own Obama. Obama. Chicago. Obama. Obama. Yeah. <laughs> New Orleans. Obama. It's not Obama. <laughs> nah. Miami. <laughs> Obama. <laughs> we can go on and on. <laughs> Just listing cities. <laughs> it either Obama. is or it isn't Obama. <laughs> Cut a hay, Wisconsin. Not Obama. Cut a hay. It's a different Obama. <laughs> Every town's got an Obama, yo. It's yo. not the same I Obama. I like my sweaters made of llama, yo. Uh-huh. Yo. I end my sentences with commas, so. Uh, Obama. Everybody gotta be their, their own Obama. Be yourself's own Obama. <laughs> Hope and change on the open range. Fuck your mama so hard, her labia hang. All right, come on, I gotta stop. Mike, Obama. I'm so sorry. No, I know. Look, look. I never. I just. Hey, I, hey. <laughs> I was playing along earlier, right? <laughs> but I heard the reports. I heard what happened after. I left. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> you, I know what happened. You, you and also, it. we recorded a whole yeah, album together. Uh, so mama fucking yeah. We had to make the whole album about fucking mamas. Whoa! It but, is a tick. It's a rap tick. It is. It's like it's like, and it's like, isn't it weird how you would? It's like it's not a rap tick that saves you in, in really any way. It saves it you though because you use it. You know all well, these lines. Well, it's 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 like you you yeah. It's sort of like it's 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 a it's a it's a tick during the setup of a rhyme though. Or or, or no, I guess it's not actually. It's okay. It's in the because you go like, oh, I I went to the store and I bought some milk. And then you can go fuck your mama so hard because well you're thinking of the word silk. Yes, right. but then you say the silk, right? And then you start rhyming about the silk, right? So you actually use it, Mike, when, when, which makes it usable. We we might have talked talk, talk about this before, but when you're writing, are are, are you just freestyling and putting it, putting it on like pen and paper, or like, no? I'm I'm writing. It's, 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 it's all it's all, it's all yeah. written. I'm, I'm making choices. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, but but the writing process, you're still you, like obviously while you're making stuff up and putting it on the paper, like you're still there's a freestyle. You're you're selecting choices out of the freestyles that that, that are coming out out of your head. Sure. Yeah. Yes. So but but then you make the choices and you go, okay, that's the one I'm using. Like the, this is the best option. And right. I write that one down. Yeah. yeah. So that's but you, an you don't you, like you don't. Yeah. You you make a choice and you go that that's that I, I'm gonna make the best choice. A good one. Yeah, yeah, do the do the good thing. You know, like most writers. Right. Well, is that, so, somebody about uh, wrote uh, in England uh, when whose lens anyway was on the air in England, a hilarious review said, "Why not prepare something funny?" Why not? Not uh, I, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read something. Uh, a lot of people, you know, we have a history on this show of like uh, we 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 you know people we read people who put themselves out there and demand their time. They're on the skillet, you know. Uh, but uh, I, I, I thought this was a, I, you know, th- th- this isn't gonna blow anyone's mind. It, but I thought it was like this is sort of the every man kind of thing. I got this. I got handed this note, and uh, I won't. I won't keep. Uh, I'll, I'll just get through it. But not, that's something to get through. In a way. <laughs> Dear Dan, if you're reading this, it means that at some point I was able to intercept you and hand this to you. That's not true. I was given to it by a, a, a subordinate. It's the, Brandon. The, if you, a subordinate. One well, of your I, friends. I, there are channels, and it got to me. Well, that's the importance of you know, boundaries. Who gave it to you? Brilliant. I don't even remember. Oh, God. It's it was some, me. So, someone I was someone Steve. I someone I pay someone else to remember their name. Uh, <laughs> Ke- Ke- Steve. Ke- Ke- Keisha, Keisha, who who was it that handed it to me? Steve. Okay, sorry. Right. Ke- Ke- Keisha, why did your voice overlap with mine? Okay, never mind. All right. Keisha. Keisha. Yeah. Keisha. You know what? Yeah. Keisha. You're welcome. <laughs> 
You're welcome. No, I know. Yeah. I don't accept. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it, my my diversity program can't be fictional. It, it, it doesn't help. <laughs> if Demorge was here, the three of us would have whooped your ass. <laughs> Such a stereotype. Shout out to Demorge. So Demorge, Demorge. 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 Does he know the show is ending? Yeah, he knows. Oh, okay, good. Keisha. Wow. The nerve. Yeah. All right. The nerve. Uh, in which case, thank you for taking it and reading it. Also, thank you for not socially rejecting me when I spoke to you briefly at the drawing room, which would have haunted me forever, in parentheses, and how you so generously and thoroughly answered my question about characterization. I've got pretty bad social anxiety. I feel lonely and ashamed a lot, but I'm learning to accept myself better. I've got a neurodiverse family. I'm learning to accept them better, too. Hearing about your complex relationships with people and writing has really helped me. Uh, Harmontown is so much more than 360 episodes of the best podcast ever made. Uh, <laughs> The, the, the yeah, whoop, okay. I heard someone <laughs> say no. Someone no. <laughs> it's not more than that. That's all it is. Listen to American Life. <laughs> <laughs> the day I came across your Story Structure 101 post was the day I also discovered Joseph Campbell in Harmontown. It was also the day I figured out how to end a story I was writing, which was the first story I got published. Now I see this as that Campbellian thing where if it's meant to be your adventure, the world will open. I will miss your dialogue on growth, truth, and happiness. I will miss the podcast like I am losing a very good friend. Thank you for everything, although I am sure you'll continue to inspire your moonbound, neurodiverse band of Armenians just in different ways. Uh, uh, Kristen, I'll just use her first name. Thank you, Kristen. Uh -oh. That was really good. Also, I, I, I don't know if it's the same Kristen, but so, uh, another Kristen gave me an awesome gift of, of, of a bunch of little notebooks like this. So thank you, Kristen, for that. That's it better awesome. not be like a letter that's identical to that, except it's like... <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I don't want to get corny, but I really can't say it. Like, like the, the, only, the only thing that I will take away from this... like what, What's it been? Seven, eight years? How long have we been doing this? Yeah. By the way, I just want to say one thing. <laughs> I, in, in 360 Classic. episodes, uh, I have gotten, a, you know, a many, many, like, you know, letters pressed into my hand. And so if you're out there and you're thinking, like, I wrote this motherfucker of, like, my dog died and I did all that. I've, I've read 87 to 89 percent of the letters that... <laughs> That you've handed me in the back alley or the out front and stuff, and they're all they're all always great. I I read that one; it got handed it handed to me tonight. That one represents all of your letters. Like I think yeah, that's what's always e been so everybody special that, about that, it. that knows that we hang out in the drawing room. And you guys have come out and, and and said hello, and usually in a very shy way. And I have a question th about that. Yeah, um, people, y'all. Y'all tell people on the show that y'all hang out at the drawing room? We, 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 we mention it, yeah. We really? Yeah. In the very in the, beginning. But I, I, I seen you there. That, that's uh, yeah, but that's, I, I, I'm glad to know that now because I won't feel safe there anymore. <laughs> y'all let everybody know no, but, that but, that's like, where it's, you hang out. It's, it's, it's been so cool like throughout the years of like me, me, meeting you all, like, like, like all these faces in the crowd and, and people listening. It's been really cool just to like... I don't know why it means that much to you, and uh, but it means a lot to me that you guys are all so like so sweet. Oh, that's the thing I was gonna try. It means a lot to you because of. <laughs> it, it... <laughs> that 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 is the most Harmon sound thing I could have possibly had. It means a lot to them because of the time spent. That's both the thing. It's like a way to deflect it because it's like it's just time spent. I mean, like you, and that's why when somebody says like, "Holy shit, your podcast means so much," like it, it, it that means they put in the time, and, and it's it's like they've done as much work as we have. But there, there are people that only listen to a, a dozen episodes. There's people that have gone and listened to the the entire thing, like from the very beginning. Um, the fact that. Grey Worm from uh, Game of Thrones likes it. The fact that like Rob Corddry likes it. The fact that like just like like people that I've met that that live like w in Europe and South America and shit. Like the fact that, that that it means something to listen to. I guess neurodiversity and and our our weird ramblings. That it's really crazy to me. Like it's it's so. Like, I will say to everybody that listens to this one, like thank you. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, we got, we, got, we got as much out of it as you did, believe me. I didn't think we'd last seven weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> um, hey, waka waka. Wow. All right, Dan, Dan we're, we're, we're getting close to closing time, but um, I think I mean, it's time for you we're, to... We're in it. Yeah, we're, to, well, we're well past it. Can, but can, but uh, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it on you right now. Um, say goodbye to Harmontown. Thank you, Jeff. I started here. <laughs> How can I? <laughs> the year was 2012. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, um, uh, uh, how about, can we all give it up for, I, I think the most joyful part of Harmontown, in, in my experience, has been Rob Schraub's <laughs> contribution. Oh, man. Thank you, Jeff. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hey. Uh, no. If you're, if you're listening, there's people walking out. <laughs> people are, uh... People are stapling themselves to their chairs in in what I can only describe as a reverse ovation. (laughs) I uh, I don't I don't know I don't know what to say that uh, I really don't know what to say about about any of that. You're in the middle of a very complicated racial Oreo. There's a lot of pressure on you. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of pressure. It's inverted. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know. I, I mean, like about it, like about maybe a year or two years ago, I was going through a pretty dark time, and that's when I started coming to the show regularly, and it really, really helped me get back on my feet. You know, like just mentally. Because I'll take I, it from I, here. I, I, yeah, please. <laughs> I'm about to drop it. But it just it just made me feel feel like less alone and uh, you know uh, I was just yeah I just hit a, a deep deep valley creatively and and just just I don't know and and just being here and you know it was the, really I mean I I just it was how I got to hang out with my friends and and then and just getting a lot of love online was very 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 sweet. <laughs> It's very sweet, and I'll and I'll I I'm not I don't I don't really it's not hitting me how much I'm gonna miss it yet you know like right now I'm all I'm thinking of like my my knees are so fucking cold right now because it's what? just like Why? freezing what? it's uh, freezing it's freezing up here I'm Why just your knees What's I what, don't know what, like what this weird... area like is right here are your knees cold. You got I some cold no, knees? No one has your weird Midwestern old man's disease. <laughs> ah, winter's I coming. I take it back. I don't miss this. My kneecaps are I'm blushing. I'm not going to miss this. I'm not going to miss this. I, 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 I do want to say the reason I brought up the Duncan Trussell thing and, the, and podcasting in general is because... <laughs> what is <laughs> happening? It's just the haunted house music. It's just playing. This is Jeff's outgoing voicemail. Think, it's a get a, used to it a, song. A, a good uh, no, no. Oh. oh, you were talking to him. No, oh. it's just, well, this is listen. just as good as your thing, Dan. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> as a <laughs> thank you so much, man, for being <laughs> like me and like yeah, we'll 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 feel this twenty years from now, and we're that's because we're better people. I'm already feeling it. Uh, well, yeah, me too. I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> the, the the but I, I the reason I brought up the Duncan Trussell thing was also because like I want you guys to understand everyone within the reach of my voice that like it, I have been addicted to podcasts and have relationships with with podcasts, so I understand. Uh, and that, that's why I'm so grateful to you guys for making it, for, for, for choosing it. Cause there has to be a lot of forgiveness involved and there's an addiction that is really, it, 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 it reflects the best part of you where you're like, you know, warts and all, I'm going to just keep coming back to this. And I choose this to be my family. And I, that, they, 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 like in saying goodbye, I want you guys to really hear me on this, that like, 
I'm old and tired and really looking forward to woodwork and like, <laughs> like, like, like just kind of like not being myself as a famous person for a while. That has absolutely nothing to do with the advice I would give you if you're 25 and you're, or 75, but spiritually 25 because you're just now going like, what the fuck should I do tomorrow? Like, Please put yourself out there. Don't give up on the transparency and, and vulnerability and honesty as the eventual cure-all in the war between good and evil. Um, like, 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 I am not waving a white flag. I am, like, laying down and taking a long nap after a Thanksgiving dinner. Like, I, I, am, I, am, I am fat and sad and tired. Or not sad, 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 like, the way you're sad because Wizard of Oz is on again. Like, like... <laughs> Like, like, not sad. Like, not pathetic. Right. But like, 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 f full, it's done. Like, 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 <laughs> like, like, that's sad. Like, 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 please, I like if if you, like, the, the things that you guys say about like what inspired you about it, stick with that, go with that. I am not, I'm not, I'm not ending it because those things don't work and don't make me very happy. And I gotta say to a lot of you kids who have who have who have said to me, you know, shared the incredibly personal and touchy topic of being close to the edge um, at certain times, which is not an abnormal thing and not something to be ashamed of and something you absolutely should share with somebody. Um, I, I have been there too, and this podcast has kept me away from that ledge. And, and so definitely fucking like follow your bliss. If you are so sad that this podcast is ending, this may be your cue now to wh whether it's a podcast or a basil garden on your windowsill or a rocking chair, like you like do that project, do that thing. New action creates new thought. P don't, fucking check out on me the world has sucked since way before you were born like that's not that's not a logical decision um like this too shall pass stick with me be exceptional tell me this story 20 years from now when you run into me at a bar i, I, I thank you so much for being here for me you saved my life um, also, was, Spencer Crittenden, what, what, what would the world be without meeting a Spencer? Yeah. Can we please give a huge? Uh, yeah. There would be no harm oh, quests. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, no. Spencer loves this. Oh, he no. loves it. Check out Color of Chaos on DM's Guild. <laughs> it's an advertisement. And uh, Bre Brandon Johnson and Steve Levy and Demarge Brown and Curtis Armstrong and all the people that we've had together. And also, look around, g give everybody next to you a hug because you guys are all the greatest. I'm gonna cry because I'm a crier. Uh, I love you all so much. Mike Eagle, everybody, give it up for Mike. Thank you for being here. Give it up for Kamel Nanjiani, Emily Gordon. All y'all, thank you so much. Um, let's all go next door and have a drink together. I'm gonna get sad and cry. <laughs> I've been your comptroller, Jeff Davis, your mayor, Dan Harmon. <laughs> Drive fast. Take chances. Let's all get down. Oh, here comes the dance party. Chop, Harmon, uh, get a dance. Well, from the beginning, we've never known how to do an ending. We've always had the show go on too long, and this is the name of that rap song. It's too long, the show's too long. This is the name of that rap song. Go. I have a small ding-dong, and that's apparently why global warming is happening. Good night, see you next door. Thank you all. The next uh, Harmon... Uh, not, not Harmon Town, but the next podcast is yet to come. I'll keep you posted. So look alive. Did you get any of that? It's a good show.